two undefeated teams, one national championship. Number one, Florida State takes on number two, Virginia Tech. Michael Vick and Virginia Tech have been a Cinderella story, but the Knowles plan on giving Bobby Bowden his first undefeated season. The Nokia Sugar Bowl. The Nokia Sugar Bowl. ABC Sports proudly presents exclusive coverage of the national championship game. It's the grand finale of the Bowl Championship Series. You are looking live at the Louisiana Superdome where tonight we'll crown the first champion of the new millennium. The unbeaten Florida State Seminoles inside their locker room here in New Orleans. They were expected to make it here before the season even began. But not their opponents. The Virginia Tech Hokies. They climbed from number 13 in the preseason poll all the way to number two with their magical year. Good evening, everybody. I'm Brett Musburger. Let's begin tonight by checking in on our two teams. We start with Virginia Tech, and here's Jack Aru. Jack? Brent, if anybody's wondering how Michael Vick, the freshman, is handling the national championship pressure, consider this. For the final hour before departing the hotel, he went to the team's video arcade and played arcade basketball. He took on all his teammates as comers and whipped them all. Once the team got on the bus, however, they didn't utter a word until they got to their locker room. Now for what's going on with Florida State, here's Lynn Swan. Thank you very much, Jack. I would term the Florida State Seminoles as quietly confident because normally it's a loud, boisterous, fun-loving group with pregame meal on the bus right over. They were unusually quiet. Only a few groups discussing what they hoped the game would happen from this evening and confident because they have all their personnel healthy and ready to play. Unlike the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl of last year where they had to play without the start the back, Chris Winkie, Brent. The Big Easy, Lynn. We're enjoying yourself as a 24 hour business. Today and last night, the streets were jammed with folks looking for those precious tickets. Our two quarterbacks here this evening are exact opposites. As you look at the tail of the tape, one a 19-year-old left-hander, Michael Vick, the other a 27-year-old right-hander, Chris Winkie. And we welcome my colleague, Gary Danielson. Gary, two unique stories at the quarterback position. You know, Brent, I, I think the major story in college football has been Michael Vick, a freshman leading his team here, and the story of whether this would be stage right in this big stage. I don't think so. I'm down on the field. He recognized me, gave me that big wink. He is ready to play. Brent, if you talk to the coaches, he's really, for the new decade, the holy grail of what coaches are looking for. Gladiator body, sprinter speed, and a Randy Johnson fastball. He's got the whole package. But wouldn't you like to have a 27-year-old under center in a title game? 27. Let me think here. I was in the NFL three years and been benched three times by 27. <laughs> <laughs> truly, truly. Uh, he's the traditional guy. He's that age because for six years he tried to play baseball, but he's 20 and one as a starter. He missed it a year ago and he's pointed to this game. He's going to be a drop back guy, but he's got plenty of receivers. Let's meet our starting lineups. Introducing the Virginia Tech defense. At free safety from Vienna, Virginia, number 14, Nick Sorensen. At Rover from Mays Landing, New Jersey, number 16, Corey Bird. At cornerback from Orlando, Florida, number three, Ike Charlton. At cornerback from Clewiston, Florida, number nine, Anthony Midget. At outside linebacker from Bel Air, Ohio, number 40, Ben Taylor. An inside linebacker from Blackstone, Virginia, number 43, Michael Hawks. An inside linebacker from Columbia, South Carolina, number 46, Jomel Smith. At defensive end from Springfield, Virginia, number 96, John Engelberger. At defensive tackle from Lynchburg, Virginia, number 77, Carl Bradley. At defensive tackle from Jacksonville, Florida, number 92, Nathaniel Williams. 
at defensive end from Brownsville, Tennessee, number 56, All-American Corey Moore. Head coach Frank Beaver and the rest of the unbeaten Hokies. Introducing the Florida State offense. At guard from Panama City, Florida, number 68, All-American Jason Whitaker. At center from Miami, number 57, Eric Thomas. At tackle from Monticello, Florida, number 60, Tarlos Thomas. At guard from Eustis, Florida, number 64, Justin Oman. At tackle from Kissimmee, Florida, number 72, Brett Williams. At tight end from Augusta, Georgia, number 85, Ryan Sprague. At tailback from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, number 23, Travis Miner. At fullback from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, number 10, Dan Kendra. At quarterback from St. Paul, Minnesota, number 16, Chris Winky. At split in from Tallahassee, number 80, Ron Dugans. At split in from Bradenton, Florida, number 9, All-American Peter Warwick. Head coach Bobby Bowden and the rest of the unbeaten Seminoles. Frank Beamer is with Jack, so let's go down below. Well, Brent, starting wide out, Ricky Hall suffered a broken foot earlier in the week. Coach, he didn't come out and warm up. What's going to be his status? Well, we think he can play. We're going to find out here in a few minutes. Now, what's more important, to have him as a wide out or to return punts? He's so deadly. Well, both. I think we need to try him, though, at wide out first. Make sure he can handle it, and then uh, if he can, maybe we'll get him back there on punt return. Brent? Jack, thank you very much. Gary, what about the offense here tonight of the Hokies? Well, if you look at Virginia Tech, they are really the offense. If Florida State had to pick someone not to play, they would not pick Virginia Tech because it's very similar to Georgia Tech. Remember, Joe Hamilton with his option and mobile quarterback put up 35 points. Michael Vick, if he does it right, is capable of doing that. How much do they need a hole here tonight, do you think? I, I think it's critical. When you look at teams that have beaten Florida State, they've done it with receivers. If Florida State can double team Andre Davis, they could have problems. Our officiating Carew is from the SEC. Actor John Goodman with the ceremonial coin toss. He's down below with our referee, Steve Shaw. Virginia Tech, you're the visitor. You'll call the toss, call it in the air. If I drop it, we'll flip it again. Call it loud enough for them to hear you. So, he has called a tails. It is a head. Florida State, you've won the toss. You want to defer, right? They're going to defer. It is your choice. You we'll may Virginia Tech will receive. Which goal would you like to defend? All right, turn your backs over here. Virginia Tech over there. Florida State has won the toss and will defer. Virginia Tech will receive. So now Lynn Swan is with Bobby Bowden. So let's get down below to Lynn. Thank you, Brent. Coach, question I have is in this ball game with Chris Winkie leading your team, do you play it close to the best early or do you open it up early? No, we'll open it up uh, to win the ball game. We're going to try to do what, what we do the best, Lynn. There were some tough people on the other side, Michael Vick, Corey Moore. If you had your choice to pick one of them to stop, who would it be? It would be Vick. Uh, Moore's tough enough, but we could put a, we could put two on him or three on him and slow him down. The other kid is hard to stop. Coach, thank you. Good luck this evening. Thank you, Lynn. Brent? 
Michael Vick and the Hokies will go on the attack here first. So a chance for them to shake whatever jitters might remain for the 19 year old freshman. The left hander the wonderkin the redshirt freshman if you will who has seemed so mature in handling all the free game hype that has gone on. Brent remember this championship games are very long games. Both of these teams need to handle the pressure by concentrating on the present tense. Don't worry about the hype or the hoopla. Concentrate about what's going on and focus in on their assignment. That's the best way to play your game. Here is a story ladies and gentlemen Sebastian Janikowski who came to the United States Daytona Beach from Poland. He's a junior. This will be his last collegiate game with Florida State. He was one of several Seminoles <laughs> who was caught breaking curfew this week. However unlike several others he will start tonight because as coach Bobby Bowden said we have international rules <laughs> for him. So here is Sebastian Janikowski who is one of the best at putting the ball into the end zone. Sixty eight percent of his kickoffs into the end zone and now Michael Vick and we asked Michael what do you need to do early. I just want to go out there and move the ball on our first drive you know even if we move the ball a couple of yards and you know get two or three first downs we have to punt you know that's all that, that's all right with me I think we just have to come out there and make a statement let them know they're not going to push us around. So Michael Vick wanted to make a statement here early. Tyrone Stith is his tailback. And a false start right to begin that game. Something that plagued the championship game last year out in Tempe, Arizona. When these fellas take more than a month off, you tend to have that sometimes in the early stages of games like this. Dead ball foul. False start on the offense. Five yard penalty. First down. A negative on the first play of this championship encounter. Brent, not just in these big games here. Remember the Orange Bowl, Alabama had 19 penalties in that football game. Emma Johnson, who has replaced Hall, comes off to Vicks right. And they do run stiff. A base handoff. And let's meet the Nokia starting lineup for Virginia Tech. Their offensive line, average height, 6'4, 289 pounds. They will be called upon to pick up blitzes here tonight. Paul is injured, but he will play, as we heard from the coach. Andre Davis is the big play man, 100 and 200 meter champion. And in their backfield, they have rushed for almost 2,000 yards and 22 touchdowns, with Stith leading the way. They do have a running back by the name of Andre Kendrick, a changeup back out of Lynchburg. The straight eye formation. Vic escapes. Free. All the way to the 39 yard line before Derek Gibson tackles him. A 25 yard gain. Gone are the butterflies. Well, there you see right there the wild card in this football game. I mean, it doesn't take a genius when you have this type of quarterback. You get back out in the pocket. You've got one play. Now you've got the second play, the busted play, the on called play. And Brent, this might be the best running back that ever played. And by the way, he can throw really well. <laughs> the best running back at quarterback, quarterback right? You're right. Yeah. I mean, this guy runs like a running back and throws like a quarterback. Now he, folks, he could well be the best running back on the uh, field here tonight. He might be. From the shotgun for the first time. And again, trying to escape that pressure, dances back the other way. Quick, strong, powerful, heading for the first down marker. A look at this defense that now knows it has its hands full here tonight. Reynolds, with that speed, is going to have to catch someone who's faster than he is, and that's Michael Vick. The linebackers are led by Tommy Pulley, a junior from Baltimore, with 109 tackles. The secondary was juggled here tonight because Thomas is healthy, Hope is healthy, and that's why they put them out there. So far, Virginia Tech hasn't blocked anybody. 
No one's got open. They haven't gained a yard on the called play, and Michael Vick has driven the ball past midfield. And our first substitution defensively, Sean Key, number 18, checks in at free safety. So it'll be second down and that much for Frank Beamer's Hokies. Here's our senior from Miami, 6'1, 190. He runs the 40 and 4'3'2. One of the faster Knowles in that backfield. Offensive coordinator Ricky Bussell has been Virginia Tech except for one year since 1987, the year Frank took over the program. The Michael Vick led Hokies near midfield. And the Knowles haven't been able to catch the young quarterback yet. Davis in motion to see what they're going to do. Durden went with him. There's an option look, and Stith on a toss, bolts free. Stith swings inside the 30. Down at the 26 yard line, Brian Allen, but it's 26 more yards and a very impressive you're, opening drive. You're seeing the Georgia Tech game plan right here. Spread them out, use the play action pass, use the quarterback, and now the sprint option. But look at this cutback. Stiff is a big load, and he runs at tacklers. He doesn't try to dance around. He's the real deal and matched up with Vic. He is a tough load for this Florida State team to handle. You look at the option going to the wide side of the field. There's the pressure. There's the pitch. And look at that cutback. Perfect. Number 56, Roland Seymour checks in at defensive end. One of those who broke curfew who didn't start. So this is his first play. That was fullback Jarrett Ferguson's first carry of the game. Keep this stat in mind. Tech has rushed for 65 yards here, and Florida State only allows 98.8 a game. So keep that one in mind as this evening unfolds. The Vic, the left-hander, plenty of time. Davis on the juggle. Down at the 12-yard line, it is first down. Hokies. I told you. No stage fright for this guy. Crossing route. The tight end is going to come this way. Davis is coming the other way. Watch the big guy cross. He's trying to pick off. That's that crossing route. The pick route. That's what you do against that bump and run coverage. A lot of crossing routes if you have the time. Michael Vick gives you that time because he gets out of the pocket. David Warren checks back in at left defensive end for the Knowles. And a whistle prior to the snap. No idea up here. Please reset the 25 second clock to 25 seconds. There was no flag. I didn't see anybody moved uh, and uh, you know for a guy Michael Vick said our first drive we'd like to just make a couple first downs he may put points on the board and remember they were penalized yep five yards first play. prior to the first snap yep. from the 13 yard line stiff the tailback they keep Davis in motion here is stiff pounding the middle of that defense of the Knowles. All the way to the six yard line and a quick attacking left side of the offensive line. This is the number one running play. Pulling the guard, isolation play with the fullback. It's an ISO load. Watch the guard. The left guard will pull. Here comes the fullback. They wrap it around and stick it right up there. Tyrone Stiff reminds me of an old teammate of mine, Brent. Ernest Biner out of East Carolina. Oh, he was He's a good that one. type of a player. You know when you got Vic down here Gary you can roll out over to the right side he's such a good runner if they want to put some pressure on the D but they've had success just running right straight ahead not getting the speed involved as they do here and that time Pulley jumped in from his linebacking spot number 29 made the first big defensive play if you will for the Knowles in this game. It's a little bit different from Florida State. I don't know, and Mickey Andrews, their defensive coordinator right there, if they face this type of power and speed from the tailback and the quarterback. They face Ronald Curry and Joe Hamilton passing game and mobile quarterback. This is a power and mobile quarterback. 
Seymour back in at left defensive end for Andrews defense third and short. Extra running back and Stith dives toward the first down marker it'll be close. Beamer waiting for the signal down on the field. And the chains will come out. Look at that. They taking the clock down. First drive, very successful, keeping that defense off the field. Over five minutes already. That much for the first down on fourth down. Well, first decision. I think, he sent, about it. I think he sends a message to his team and goes for it. There is absolutely no indication that he even thought of Shane Graham on that sideline. Andrews sets his defense. And here we go. Vic, Ferguson, Kendrick, and Stith in the backfield. Why not a quarterback sneak with the size of that guy? He might try to pull him off with his count. Doesn't. Hits him fast. Kept the ball, nothing doing, fumble, end zone. Florida State covers it. Florida State recovers the fourth down fumble in the end zone. It was Corey Simon, the All-American nose guard, number 53 from Pompano Beach, Florida. Messed up play, obviously. Looked like they were going to try to run the option, and the ball was kicked right at the end. Watch. It looked like Vic ran, turned the wrong way, and then the ball is kicked back into the end zone. Michael Vic turned the wrong way on the option. Look at that. There's the strip at the end of the play. It was Gibson that stripped the ball, and then watched the kick by Gibson. Didn't try to do it, but it went into the end zone. The first big break goes Florida State's way, and we're scoreless. What's that old chestnut about big players and big games? Corey Simon, who led the defensive line with 84 tackles, including four sacks and 21 TFLs, has just made the first big play of this championship game. Now 27-year-old Chris Winky, his chance for that ring that he could not compete for last year. And it is the handoff to Travis Miner out to the 25-yard line. How much does it mean to Chris Winky and how satisfying is it we asked him to have this opportunity here tonight to play. I told myself that, that I was going to rehab for eight months or however long it took me to come back for this opportunity to play for a national championship. I've got that opportunity today um, and uh, you know I don't want to leave that ring in New Orleans. I don't want to give it to anybody else. And he completes his first pass. And Peter Warwick has now tied his reception output of last year at the Fiesta Bowl as the Seminoles keep going without the huddle here and now they will regroup. Now they'll draw back and the substitution package. Kendra leads the way. Brent, you're right. They wanted to go no huddle but because of the third and short it forced them into a different type of a, a grouping in this football game. Here's Peter Warwick and what he has done in big games and already he's come up with that one fake toss and Winky rolling in Warwick's direction. He's got him one on one. Can he get him off into the middle of the field? Warwick goes up. Got it. Fumble. No. Incomplete. Peter Warwick let one get away in the early going. Both teams on short yardage plays tried to go for the big play. One on one. Hey, this is the matchup. You're all American against Charlton, the guy that did uh, midget, excuse me, the guy that did all of the talking in this football game to start with. The ball's up. You would expect your, your all American receiver to make that catch. Good hit at the end of, the end of it by Anthony Midget. But Ike that Charlton. Went for everything. Eric, excuse me, but Ike Charlton standing back deep with Hall being injured. And the punter, Keith Cottrell, is a good one. These two have met before in high school. It's a low punt. High bounce. Couldn't escape the headhunter. Down at the 30 yard line, a 44 yard punt, a two yard return, and a hit by Malcolm Tatum. 
from behind the Virginia Tech bench. Coach Foster, the defensive coordinator, talking to his troops over there on the sideline as Michael Vick and the offense get ready for their second series. And remember the first time they drove 10 plays, 73 yards, nine of them were running plays. You gotta believe they've got to get 88 into this attack soon. And Vick rolls hard, left-handed, incomplete. They tried to hit Davis. Second down and 10. A defense with the lock and low. Look at, here's the lock down here. Two guys, man to man, all over the field, load up at the top. A late pitch, stiff. Driven out of bounds that time is Sean Key, number 18, the senior from Miami, puts a pad to him. The option play will simplify the Florida State defense. Remember Ralph Friedgen, great coach, coach of the year, Ricky Bustle, Ralph Friedgen, they know each other, they've talked to each other on the phone, 35 points. How'd you do it, Ralph? You were the coach of the year. Spread them out, run the option, and then it'll simplify. That's what Frank Beaver told Ricky Bustle, and Ricky Bustle is getting into this game now. Terrell Parham, number 86, one of the wideouts for Virginia Tech on third down. Stith, first down. Gary, I guess my question to you is this. Can he keep it up through an entire four quarters oh, against bet. the defense? This guy has carried the ball a lot all year. He's a workhorse. Plus, they have Andre Kendrick, their backup, who has also carried the ball this year a number of times. And, and this is two guys that can put yards on and attack the line of scrimmage. If you're a good running back, you trust your offensive line that that hole will be there. That's why Stiff is hitting that line full speed. Here's first down and they keep him lined up in that eye formation with the fullback Ferguson in front of him. Play fake and they bring the wide receiver off the corner to get the ball in number 18's hands, Emma Johnson. And we have a flag down on the field. Five yard face mask on the defense. Five yards from the end of the run. First down. He spotted on a previous play, Michael Vick. Yeah, Brian Allen right there. Get off me. And I think that was Michael Vick. Bring it on. Nope, that wasn't Michael Vick. That was Brian Allen. Got a little hit on Jarrett Ferguson, number 27. And Ferguson, the hard hitting lead fullback, has probably been banging into those linebackers. Pretty good the way this running game is working. Stiff has rushed for 46 yards. It's trapped on the end around. Tries to dance free. When he turned to hand the ball off, he almost put it in a Seminole's belly. Well, that's how the game started. And you can see Virginia Tech knew it was going to be that way. And that's why this game plan has been so open. We've seen bootlegs. We've seen options. We've seen reverses. They know that if you come against this Florida State defense with a one pitch offense, just a fastball, they'll eat you up. Tommy Pulley again coming hard for the Knoll defense. From the gun. Trying to dance and he won't because number 44, Bradley Jennings, the sophomore from Miami, is too fast and won't let him out. You see Michael Vick, he wants to stay in the pocket. He wants to be a drop back passer. Because of that, he bustled the coordinator. He's going to have to force him to get out of the pocket with calls. You've got a defense that tries to keep him in there. You've got a quarterback that wants to prove he's a drop back passer. So now the calls has to force him out of the pocket and do it on the run. Third and 12. The big play fellas number 88. They have to find a way to get it into the speedsters hands. He's off to the top of your screen left side of the formation. Penalty flag on the play. And Vic dances free. Battling for the first down spot. But there is a flag. Flag 
You know, it's interesting when you think of the fact that Michael Vick is a freshman who is taking on this Florida State defense here today. And certainly he has attacked with his feet as we await Shaw's decision. It is against Vick, but let's go back and show you what these quarterbacks did. Now, remember, as freshmen, that's remember, Joe Hamilton played a great game as a senior. We go back to 96. He got knocked down, knocked out, hung in, was only 4 of 11. Tommy Frazier did pretty good for Nebraska at 93. Danny Werfel, injured and knocked out, came back later as a senior to win a national championship. Bernie Kosar, Gary, your old buddy, yep. he probably did the best of all. He did it, but it took him that one game to really get the feel of this football team before he really got that game and won the national championship later in, in, for that football team. You know, he was coming into that Florida State game. Yeah, you got, can't simulate this type of speed and size that Florida State brings. As a result of the mistake, it is third and 17. The Hokies need to reach the 30-yard line. Davis still going to motion. Watch it. He has to dance away. Now he fires oh. for Davis. What a throw. Oh, baby, what a strike as he finally gets it to Davis. 18 yards. But did you see that rocket and, launcher? And did you see the beginning of it? This guy throws so well with flat foot. Watch his footwork in the pocket. Davis is to the outside coming across. Watch him dive. Get it out of the way and throw it. Doesn't even step. He is so good at getting rid of that ball without stepping. In fact, Brent, I think he's a little more accurate and a little more effective when he doesn't step into his throws. He just throws him flat-footed. The first appearance by number 82, Ricky Hall. He's off to the left side of the formation. Yeah, right he broke a bone in his foot. His first snap of the game, stiff, taken on aggressively at the line of scrimmage. Tommy Pulley again, the junior from Baltimore, and he's been all over that line of scrimmage. My feeling going into this game is no matter what Coach Bobby Bowden said to this Florida State football team, he couldn't convince them that this was Tennessee or Nebraska. They couldn't believe that Virginia Tech could have enough athletes to play with them. Believe me now, they believe this team can compete with them. Frank brings Hall back over to the sideline. Davis is out to the left. Johnson's down to the right. Second down at 11. Deflected. And incomplete as Warren, David Warren out of Tyler, Texas, breaks across the line of scrimmage and got a paw. Very difficult for a left-handed quarterback to get it by this guy. It's a little easier for a right-handed quarterback. He comes out, now his left hand is closer to the line of scrimmage, and he lets that thing go, and this Paul right here gets it on it. Look at that. Now, if he was right-handed, he had a little better angle to get it by that defensive end. Third and 11. Vic surveys the defense. Andrews shows blitz coming after him, and he's in trouble. That's the second sack of Michael Vick by the Knowles here today. Some of the fellas get it's the tangled first, up down there. Excuse me. First all-out blitz by Florida State. They bring eight people, man to man to the outside. Gibson going to come right here up the gut. That's the guy that isn't blocked. Look at him come. No way you can dance around that one. Gary, that's what Donnie Nealon did when I was looking at the West Virginia yep. tape. They would gang up on the shotgun in third and long, and West Virginia came with eight. And remember, the Mountaineers are the team that pushed the Hokies to the wall and almost won the game. So Florida State obviously took a long, long look at tapes of that game. Fourth and long now, and here's the punt by Jimmy Kibble. He's a good one. Look at that, but right off the body of a Hokie, Touch a 38-yard punt. They are marking it down right there, no, the it's officials. A it's a touchback. And now the signal yep. that is coming back out to the 20. Inside the Louisiana Superdome, we get Chris Winkie and the Knowles with their second series. Jeff Cheney was very effective against Florida and is a little bit better receiver than Travis Miner. Checks in and Winkie walks right up to the line to identify where the defenders are standing. And that's the experience of Chris Winkie. Recognizing what he was looking at, the blocking is called, and Winky's pass is incomplete. From the gun, 
incomplete misfiring that time for Ron Dugans. He got to Jermaine Stringer. First, his only completion was three yards, and that was to Peter Warwick. And uh, we asked Winky if he had freedom to change all the plays at the line of scrimmage tonight. A big part of our offense is going up to the uh, to the, to the line of scrimmage without a play. Um, no one knows the play. I'll put us into into the right play uh, once I try to read the defense. So uh, there is a lot of freedom, probably more freedom than than a lot of college kids in, in terms of of running the offense. The advantage you get with a veteran over the middle hot. at the 35 yard line. He comes back to Dugans for the first down a 15 yard gain. There's the calmness Gary of yeah. Winky too after misfiring on the previous and, pass. And you have to do that if you're a passing team you can't lose confidence in your passing game or your receivers. It's just the first quarter to this game just keep going out. That's where that baseball mentality for Chris Winky comes through. You experience a lot of failure in baseball. First and ten. Pump fake looking home run again. Hello Mr. Warwick in a foot race. Hello, end zone. No strike first. Sixty four yards. Winky to Warwick. Two youngsters driven by different motivations here tonight and both determined to help Bobby Bowden finish his first ever unbeaten season and win his second championship. Sebastian Janikowski the left footed specialist from Poland on the field. And the King of Bourbon Street makes it 7 0. It's a slant with a skinny post. Peter Work is matched up to the outside of the formation right here. Watch him come in and then skinny post it. Nick Sorensen, an ex quarterback, is the mismatch. That's who they're going after, the free safety right there. They know that Sorensen doesn't have the speed to get there. You spread the field, you look for your mismatch, and you attack the mismatch. Florida State leads Virginia Tech 7 0. What the Knowles do best, partner. Yeah, you're exactly right. And look at to the unspoken communication between the quarterback. There it is. You got to have the slant. You got to fake the slant. And there's the skinny post. And you do it against the slowest defender, a guy who played quarterback. I know it's quarterbacks. We can't play free safety against Peter Ward. So Chiron Stith goes back deep, but he probably won't get a return if Janikowski kicks it true to his form. Hangs this one a little bit short. Returnable. Stith coming out. Their best running back. Powerfully to the 24. Time now to take a look at our Nokia best connection. Let's go back to the 1995 Sugar Bowl. Virginia Tech was here against Texas. Brian Still, a 60 yard punt return for a TD. That was Tech's first score of the game. They went on to score 28 unanswered points. They beat Texas 28 10. And according to Coach Beamer, that was their biggest game ever until tonight. Brent, first drive for the Hokies, nine plays, 70 yards. Their last drive, seven plays, 13 yards. Florida State's getting the feel of the game. Staying in that base eye formation. Andre Kendrick running back. And let's check in with Jackaroo. Well, Brent, after the Virginia Tech Hokies got burned by that uh, Peter Warwick pass, Bud Foster, their defensive coordinator, gathered the whole defense around and told them, look, it's only one play. He says, remember what our credo is here. We take it one play at a time. Don't worry about it. We'll go back out and we'll make, a, make up for it next chance. Bud Foster, outstanding defensive coordinator, ladies and gentlemen. He has done a great job. Steve Spurrier wanted him down in Gainesville, but he was so loyal. There's a miss snap. Vic running for his life, going in the wrong direction. Oh, and that's probably right. intentional grounding for sure. Yeah. I did not see an eligible receiver, and now the referee throws the flag. And uh, the Hokies will be penalized. See Michael Vick, he's holding his left wrist after he threw that football too. That's why you got to be a grounding on the offense. That was. Really, really be enforced with the spot of the foul. 
Loss of down, third down. That was Jamal Reynolds. He's the fastest of the defensive linemen, number 58 for Florida State. Folks, as a defensive lineman, he runs a 4 4 3 40. He's a junior from Aiken, South Carolina. Don't know what happened, but Michael Vick was not at all prepared for that snap. Sometimes the center calls the snap, but the quarterback has to let the center know that he's ready for the snap. Gary, that was a loss of 20 oh yards. And, and not only that, Brent, you got to look at this left wrist for Michael Vick. Helen Hawkins, the fullback. There's the pitch to Kendrick, and he is swarmed all over by the nose to five. You know, I, I agree with Jack. It was just. The offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Yeah, more and more penalties for Virginia Tech. You know, I agree with Jack. It was just one play, but it was quite a play, though. And when you get bombed like that, and it kind of takes apart your game plan, everything you've been working for to stay deep and not let Michael Vick do it, that could cause problems. Reggie Durden is back deep, but don't be surprised if the Knowles don't bring a little heat here on Jimmy Kibble. He's an outstanding punter, but this team can really front run. They got it. Scooped up for the touchdown. Florida State on a blocked punt with Jeff Cheney. Their backup running back picking up the blocked punt and dashing into the end zone. And now, look out. Two programs that turned around by blocking kicks. Florida State did it first. Frank Beamer copied that guy right there and emphasized kick blocking. You're so right. That can get a game out of hand quickly. Tommy Pulley was down there in the middle of things. I don't know if he deflected it. Certainly Cheney scored, and now Janikowski makes it 14 0. There is Pulley being congratulated over there on the sideline. So from all indications, the linebacker. Coming right at you. Good snap. Coming right up the gut. And it was Tommy Pulley. That's who got it, the linebacker. This has to be disheartening. The two things that Virginia Tech thought they would be able to do well is not give up the big pass play, especially to Peter Warwick, and not get kicks blocked. Tommy Poley, who announced that he's coming back. He says he needs one more year to play to be the linebacker he wants to be. Freshman with his work cut out now. Janikowski. Pounds this one to the end zone, folks. <laughs> Going downfield is Vic Watts Johnson. There was contact, penalty flag. Durden pushed his hands into him, and I think they had lost contact with the football. Reggie Durden panicked right at the end of that play. Fifteen yard penalty. 
pass interference on the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Let's go down to uh, Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, remember on that last offensive series, Michael Vick was complaining with his left hand. It was right down here in the thumb area. When he came off, the trainers looked at it, and Michael Vick refused treatment. He went to the headset to be debriefed by Ricky Bussell and went back out. He still has had nothing done to that area. One of the few times I've seen him underthrow a receiver that bad. Now I am really wondering about that thumb, oh, Gary. I've I, never I seen so. him underthrow yeah. a receiver or throw a lollipop like that. Yeah, absolutely. That's two of them. The last one was not well thrown either. And Andre Davis, well, he was in the open by about five yards and gaining on the play. Maybe he didn't want Michael Vick, anybody, to look at it because he knew something was wrong with it. Remember, Brett Favre. remember the graphic we showed. Everybody on what happens when freshman quarterbacks play this defense call our friend Joe Hamilton up there at Georgia Tech and ask him call Danny Werfel right here in New Orleans in fact he might even be at this game here tonight come to think of it second down and ten it's a tough night now stiff hard hitting running back in trouble you cannot cut back against this defense there's another penalty flag down Sean Key makes the stop but there is more yellow. I think two plays have lost the focus of Virginia Tech. The fumble in the end zone and a long pass to Peter Warwick. Virginia Tech has lost focus. Five yard face mask on the defense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. We'll repeat second down. Oh, well, let's throw in a third one. The block punt for a touchdown. Oh, yeah. That's put, a killer. That, that is, that's when you lose focus. You got to block at least from inside out and make that block come from the outside. Hand is the big story in the game. You cannot beat Florida State just running the ball. You have to attack the bump and run. Well, Gary, also, it's pretty much been the base eye formation against this team. Do you know how many formations Steve Spurrier used in the first half alone against these guys? And you Georgia have got Tech. to try to influence them with formations and a lot of motion and things like that. That's just from the fellows who have played against this kind of speed on defense. Part of the story, I think, there, Brent, is not having Ricky Hall. It has limited them. Taking their third receiver, he's already in the game, Emmett Johnson. So you go down to your fourth guy and go three wide outs, that's tough. Gary, what about if they have to, and I hate to even mention this at this stage in the game, and uh, probably shouldn't, but what about Dave Meyer if they have to go to their backup quarterback? Watch Dave Meyer. He's a drop Offside back passer. On the defense. Five yard penalty. It'll be a first down. There's Ricky Hall. You know, the game is played at a different pace, especially on a carpet. When you're matched against a defense with as much speed, Corey Simon. Down there in the middle. He's the fellow who recovered the loose ball in the end zone. Made the first big play on that opening drive. An All-American nose guard. He came back his senior year for a shot to win the championship. The gun. The pump fake and dropped in underneath. And they used the fullback, Jared Ferguson. The Knowles were concerned about that. But we did have a chance to ask Corey Simon now. How do you think Vic will handle the speed of your defense? I like to think that he hasn't seen the speed that we have on this team. Um, you know, a lot has been said this week by Virginia Tech players about our speed. Uh, but, you know, it's one thing to watch them on television, but it's another thing to play against it. It is awesome speed all across the line with this team. And it's not just speed. It's speed with size. They got a fast defense for Virginia Tech, but not with this type of size. Second down and three, and Vic straight back going deep. He's got his man open. He's got Davis. Got him. Touchdown. The home run hitter comes through. Andre Davis just motors past Cleveland Thomas, and it's a 49-yard scoring strike, and 
does that play ever lift the spirits of the Hokies, their coaches, and their fans? Brent, he was that open on the play when he threw the knuckleball. He ran by Thomas like one guy was a sprinter and one guy was running backwards. It was a five yard beat, 15 yards down the field. Shane Graham adds the extra point and they cut that deficit in half. You said speedster, he did look like a track man. He is. He's the Atlantic 10 champion at 100 and 200 meters. I mean, he can flat fly. And there he is, matched up, lock and load. You have to attack it. And look at the room out here. He gives the quarterback, Michael Vick, to throw it in the box out there. When you do that as a receiver, you give that quarterback an easy throw, you fade to it, perfect strike on the deep ball. That was real easy. Here, that'll be there all night long. Oh, yeah, you got it. If you're playing Florida State and you let them take your wide receivers out of the game simply by playing bump and run, you lose. You have to attack that coverage. 80 yards in three plays. I think if you get beat that badly one time, you might try to anticipate the guy going deep. Throws a duck for an incompletion and comes back and throws a touchdown. Just a huge play for Michael Vick to Andre Davis. Kibble, their punter, handles the kickoff duties. Jermaine Stringer and Nick Maddox, the freshman running back, deep for the Knowles. And Kibble responds to Janikowski's challenge. It'll come out of the 20 yard line. Florida State offense has to be licking their chops. Last time they were on the field, they hit the long pass. Now they get back out on the field and say, it's our turn, our sir. Chris Winkie says, you just let me, Mark Rick, the offensive coordinator, right there in the middle. Give me a chance to spread out the field. I'll find the mismatch. Final seconds of our opening quarter here in New Orleans. Big plays galore. Winky. A one hopper. Let's go down to Lynn Swan. Lynn. Well, Brent, last year when the Florida State some of those played in the Fiesta Bowl, they were concerned about the long layoff. This year they had one more day in that layoff between the last game and the bowl game. They changed their routine up, and the emphasis on this year's training camp coming in the bowl game was to make sure they didn't have the rust and the timing. That pass to Warwick showed that they still have the timing. They want to keep their drives going right here, Brent. Inside handoff, but there is a penalty flag. Jamel Smith making the stop, but the flag was thrown. Travis Miner, the ball carrier. Brent, as you look at the penalty against Virginia Tech, already Bud Foster has put in the substitutes in this football game. Corey Moore went out to start this series. Darius Monroe, a backup defensive end, has come in. They think in long term. If you're the defensive quarter, you know you're going to need Corey Moore to rush in the fourth the quarter. Zone. Five yard penalty, second down. They are outstanding with the cadence count at Florida State. And they will mix it up in this football game because they're going to use the silent count. They will come up occasionally against that defense for Tech and have no call. They'll fake the snap count a few times and try to see what Virginia Tech is doing, then call an audible and then snap the ball. Moore with only one tackle in the opening quarter. So the Knowles are doing an outstanding job against Corey. Tackle pushes him outside. They run up. They use his speed to their advantage. They design the play to bring him upfield. Then they slide in underneath. Hawks makes the stop. 
the first quarter comes to an end. We had three touchdowns. Warwick started it. Then it was the block punt by Pulley. Shady for the score. Finally, Davis responds. So Virginia Tech down by 14 responds with a 49 yard touchdown pass to Andre Davis and now we start the second quarter and it is 14 7 Florida State with the lead. Bobby Bowden looking on from the sideline here first and 10 for his offense. Complete. Ron Dugan's making his second catch. Gary. Florida State still going with four wide receivers. Virginia Tech has their regular base people in there. Linebackers and safeties trying to match up. Minor and it is read perfectly by Jamel Smith. Let's take you back a few days ago. Let's talk now about Corey Moore, their All-American defensive end. Take a listen to this. Look, I'm going to tell you one time and one time only. Get the camera out of my face. I'm going to punch you. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm telling him punch him. All year he's been their emotional leader. He was trying to tell his team we're not backing up from anything. I think he said that after the fact. <laughs> Third down and three. Winky gun. Got Dugan's breaks free. They won't catch him. I don't believe. A defender with the angle can't get there too fast. Dugan's 63 yards on the quick strike. And Florida State goes back up by two touchdowns. It's spread them out, find the matchup, play one on one football. The matchup this time was Dugans against a linebacker slash safety to the outside. Boom, Midget takes go for it. You see number 40, Ben Ta Taylor come across. Midget gets beat inside. You see the safety linebacker can't get there for help. Mismatch. Janikowski again. against the team ranked number one in the NCAA in scoring defense the Florida State Seminoles put 21 points on the board early in the second quarter by the way perfect throw you talk about a strike right in there not bad coverage but the linebacker Ben Taylor couldn't get there Winky now five of nine for 153 yards and his second touchdown pass and he's gone deep. He's played long ball but Vic has gone deep once and remember he has the fastest of all the wide receivers here tonight. Well he's proven that hasn't he? <laughs> right back there. Football game. Both teams finding out the other team came to play and have some people that can make plays. Well I think Corey Moore might be a little shell shocked from what they're doing down there in the trenches well, because the, they've got a yeah, plan against absolutely. him. Absolutely. They're Quick chipping on him and run right at him when he comes up field and using backs to pick him up if he gets free kickoff and they're coming out with stiff breaks free. You said he looked like Ernest Miner. It looks like he's got a heart like Ernest he had really as does. he powers out to the 33 yard line. You had breakfast with had, the I had the breakfast with all three boys and I'm proud to say I didn't pay. <laughs> they all make more money than I do. <laughs> Kendrick the running back after the fine return by Smith. He's buried in the middle of the line with Jerry Johnson the senior from Fort Pierce Florida. That's down West Palm Beach way. I think Mickey Andrews would like to get into a position where he could blitz but when you see Davis that speedster go deep one play changed the game you know well on one hand I know the blitz will get there but on the other hand I don't like my matchup out on the outside with that guy. Emma Johnson's 18 he runs a 4 4 2. But number 88 runs a 4 2 9. Don't hold him now. Dancing. Now firing high incomplete Davis was defended and there is a penalty flag thrown now on the 46 yard line there's a penalty flag Thomas was working against Andre Davis that time and uh, let's see who this is on yes it's against the offense I could tell by the celebration by on the Noel sideline <laughs> exactly 
Look at quick out to the outside. You see the receiver going in motion to this side on the top. They try to run a quick out this time, go long ones. Look at the help deep. That allowed the corner to come underneath the throw. Vic had nowhere to go. Watch how this thing good. Hey, this is kind of cool. You got both guys in. I can watch this all day like this. Two wide receivers. And then right at the end, you get the shove when the ball's in the air. Brent, I wish you they know, looked you know, that Gary, close together. Like it, that. Looking at that, it was almost like Andre was intent on pushing it. Well, once the ball didn't go, I think he's blocking downfield thinking Vic's going to uh, run okay, the ball. Okay, sure, sure. That's what that yep. was. Exactly. That's why it looked that way. Let's go to Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, Chiron Stiff, their running back for the Virginia Tech Hokies, is icing down his right knee. It's slightly sprained. They're going to try and work on it here and send him back out. But now you're playing with one less wheel at 100 percent. Yeah, and that is a big wheel, too, Jack. We don't have to tell anybody that. Been watching oh, that 200-pound right junior out of Chesapeake, Virginia. That would be just an enormous loss. They come back with the inside handoff to Cullen Hawkins. Florida State now has countered. They got their backup linebackers in the football game as Mickey Andrews says, I want to rest my guys also. Need 23 here, Gary. Vic buys time, fires high, tipped, incomplete. And Virginia Tech forced to punt. That's the play Michael Vic has to make to win this football game. Coming out of the pocket. He buys extra time. Look at these defensive ends come up field. Offensive lineman push him right by. There's Vic. Now make a play. Make a play. Throws it high. And the Knowles going for the juggler. Here's Peter Warwick back to return this punt. And Pulley blocked the last punt. Cheney scooped it up and scored a touchdown. The second touchdown by the Knowles. And so he rushes this one. That sometimes happens after a block punt. One hop, Warwick says, let's go. And Alley, 40 yard line. And a race won't catch him. Hello, end zone. A 59 yard punt return for a touchdown. Let's go back to the top of the broadcast. The coaching staff at Florida State. Said we have got to find more ways to get the ball into number nine's hands than we did last year out in Tempe. Job well done so far. Brent picks it up off the bounce. Peter worked only touched the ball two times in this game, just like last year. The only difference from last year: two touches, two touchdowns in this football game. That was a great block by Malcolm Tatum, who has been a terror on special teams. Number three really opened the door for Warren. Janikowski adds the punt. How good is this return? This is the first punt return for a touchdown against Virginia Tech since September 17, 1988. That's over a decade. And now Florida State opening up huge daylight 28 to 7. With Gary Danielson, Jack Aroot, and Lynn Swan, I'm Brett Musburger, the Nokia Sugar Bowl for the national championship. And right now it is all Florida State. They lead it 28 7, and Peter Warwick with two touchdowns tonight. And right here is Randy Moss, his old roommate right there for Florida State. Imagine that, two freshmen, Peter Wark and Randy Moss. I don't know what's scarier, the football playing or them being roommates. <laughs> <laughs> That's the line of it up so far. It's a high kickoff, and Kendrick is coming out. Big hole, now it's Kendrick's turn. To the Knowles, 37 yard line, a 63 yard return for Kendrick. Kendrick, the backup running back, is going to take it right up the gut, right up the gap. A couple good blocks, he sets up a couple good blocks, and then he explodes. A high school quarterback passed for 4,000 yards in high school. 
Frank Beamer fell in love with the guy, said he's a runner, but a winner will find a place for him. They found a place for him as a backup running back. Remember, he has to play right now because Jack told us that Stiff is out with that injury. So after running 63 yards, he probably said in that huddle, Michael, you keep it. Yeah, Do something else. Gonna get it. It's gonna be a pass. First down and 10. If I was the Bills, I'd be <laughs> looking for Vic right now. Here he comes, rolling hard left, drop it, and the tight end reaches back and makes the catch. Stumbles at the 30-yard line. Brownie win, the sophomore from Jonesville, Virginia, his first catch. Can I cheer for one person to get to the Super Bowl? Is it okay if I do that? You can have your old Vic partner. Vic. Come on. If I Vic. ever get there, just cheer for me. Dick Reveal and I did Florida <laughs> State in the Sugar Bowl a few years back. Here comes Michael Vick in trouble. Dance is free. Great balance. And that is the third sack. What is a Hokie? We don't know. Jack Aroot, you got the answer for us, partner? Well, actually, a Hokie is nothing. It's a word. From a, from a cheer that was founded in 1896 by a student. He wrote it, won $5 in a contest. Through the years, though, the Hokies have been known as the Fighting Gobblers. They've had turkeys as mascots. Now they have a Hokie bird. Now, the one thing that's always happened is they've kind of thought that maybe it was a turkey. That's the noisemaker <laughs> that the Hokies use. <laughs> uh, <laughs> gobble, gobble, my friend. Third down, Vic throws high the run and Davis may have crashed into something over there on the side there may have been a stanchion I'm not sure what it was it looks like the field goal kicker let's go quickly back to Jack Aru well Brent surrounding the 25 yard line are these stanchions because this is an NFL area and that is what was here standing up and Davis ran into it that's what he ran into right there uh, listen, Jack, I, I've been on sidelines, though, where I haven't seen that. To tell you the truth, I mean, and I, I've stood on NFL sidelines where I don't necessarily see that standing there. That's a little dangerous for me. Fif 51 yard. Let's see now. See the end of it? Hits it, rolls over, oh, right in. There. So this will be a 51 yard field goal attempt for Shane Graham. It's the fake. Fumble. Knowles have got it. Caleb Herb is the holder, going to run the option to the outside. Ugh. Don't like that. A tight end running an option to a kicker. Against this type of speed, it better work perfectly because if it doesn't, those guys are going to close very quickly. And indeed, they did close. Even on the pitch, it looked like me anyway, like he was defended. So it's 28 7, and it'll be Florida State's ball next. On the sideline with head coach Bobby Bowden in the second quarter, Bobby, Virginia Tech looks shell shot. How do you go for the juggler? Yeah, we'll sure we'll try. I sure don't want us, I don't want us sitting on the darn thing. You know, we gotta go after him. You were talking about the mismatch being the wide receiver, but you've had a great game plan against Corey Moore, stopping him from pretty impressive. Yeah, we've got to uh... flea flicker got him again. Warwick. 33 yards. Talk about a confident coach. He can do an interview and run a flea flicker at the same time. Here it is, the wide receiver, Peter Warwick. Pitch it back, kind of hesitates. It's not there deep, and then smartly comes across the field. It's a read. Both Winky and Peter adjust their routes. They know each other, work together every day, and they do it properly. Winky on a pump fake and he will go down for the first time. David Pugh made that stop at defensive tackle as you look down on the Louisiana Superdome. Here it Here's the problem. Safety covering a receiver. Safety covering an outside receiver here. Look at that. Warwick three catches for 100 yards here tonight already. The second sack and Jamel Smith the linebacker brings Winky down. And, and I guess there's the safety belt. When you got safety on receivers, you better get to the quarterback. But it's very dangerous. If you don't get to him, you've got a wide receiver on basically a linebacker. The 
Coach Bowden graciously over uh, speaking to Lynn Swan. He <laughs> felt very confident on that pass, but then the uh, series bogged down for him. You don't suppose know, that was part of it, did you? And the first time out used by the Knowles here. Florida State Eight. only had 10 guys. 8.02 remaining in the second quarter, and Florida State leads it by three touchdowns, 28 to 7. This is third down and about 29 yards to go for the Knowles. Winky been sacked a couple times on this series. Moves the pocket, and now he'll take off well short of the first down. Slides now at the 43 yard line. And here is fourth down with Keith Cottrell back to punt. And Ike Charlton, his one time high school nemesis, back deep to return for Virginia Tech. They were coming after one, and so quickly. Cottrell fires it toward the end zone, gets a great hop on it, and Tatum down there again. What a night he's having on the Florida State special teams. The press was on, Cottrell fired, got the English, Tatum did the rest. Things are not going well for Frank Beer. You look at the statistical comparison in this football game, you see a football stop, a line drive one stop right on the goal line, basically. And you know things aren't just breaking well for your football team as Michael Vick comes on again to try it. This is a great attacking spot against Beamer's offense for Mickey Andrews and the Knowles defense. Stith is still out. Play fake and Vick's going to try it out of the end zone. Fires underneath. Second down. And Vic got nailed in the end zone. It's climbing up. They tried to go deep to Davis again. Play action pay it class coming off the line of scrimmage. Vic waits too long. Need to throw it. A little bit of flash and then gets sandwiched right at the end of it. Play action pass. Looking down. Boy, you can feel your clock. The mental clock in that pocket when you're in the end zone, that ball should have been gone. Jerry Johnson, number 92, way out of the way. Here's Kendrick, small hole, dove out a couple of yards. Let's get out to Lynn Swan. Well, Brent Stiff is out for Virginia Tech, but so is starting weak side linebacker number 29, Tommy Foley. He re aggravated an MCL sprain in his left knee, put a brace on it, wrapped some tape around it, tried to run it to go back in the ball game. But the doctors have sat him down, said they will take him inside at halftime and reevaluate it. Then, when they have more time to look at it, Brent. Bobby Rhodes, number 49, who has played a lot this year, replaces him in trouble again. Got a fire in a hurry. High. The heat was on. What a play. David Warren out of Tyler, Texas, coming after the quarterback. What an athletic play by David Warren. He backs, backs up Roland Seymour playing left defensive end for Florida State. Watch this coming from the right side of your screen. Half roll, here it comes. Whoa. That ball was just let go as he let go. And, and nice job by Warren not throwing him to the ground. This time Reggie Durden back deep and Kibble without much room. You have to assume they're going for the block. Hangs it out. Durden runs it down. The 46. Out of bounds on the far sideline. It's a 13 yard return on that punt. So Michael Vick with his hands full in New Orleans. Thank you. There's that ball minor, and it's read perfectly by the inside lineman Carl Bradley. He's a good one. 298 pounds senior out of Lynchburg, Virginia. Jack Root. Well, Brent, if Corey Moore is shell shocked, it hasn't stopped him from trying to rally the troops. He gathered the defense on the sidelines and said this Look, we've been down before. We've been down several touchdowns before. Remember what the coaches have told us take it one play at a time. Then he growled and get your butts back out there and play harder. The only way you do it, you can't <laughs> stop, that's for sure. He knocked on your door and he was an agent. Would you open it? <laughs> <laughs> and Miner, Dashin, Branson, 
That makes it to the 32 yard line. That's just about oh maybe nine yards to go. Right. There's up so here. much you want to say about a football game. You know I think another factor in this game is the turf. Two games that Virginia Tech struggled in was Pittsburgh and West Virginia. Pittsburgh threw for over 400 yards. West Virginia took him down to the last second field goal. Both of those games were on the turf. It looks to me that Florida State is a little bit quicker and a lot bigger. Third down and nine. They're rolling the pocket against the Hokey Rush, and Winky going to be sacked for the third time. Now this is the one thing that the Virginia Tech defensive coaches preached all along. Keep the heat on Winky. Foster said get to him. Start breathing on him. Start bringing him down. He'll throw high after that. Yep. And you can see the game plan. Dan Kendra the fullback number 10 by the way a former full quarterback on this football team. He's got the chip block on Corey Moore. Didn't get enough of chip off him that time. You got to get a more of a chip than that. The Knowles are concentrating so hard on Moore that now they're turning some other folks loose in that defense well, is what's happening. I don't Moore understand. with only one tackle in this game and Carl Bradley has proven to be a monster. So here on fourth down and again they're going to try to press it and Cottrell with the answer drops one toward the goal line and it goes across. Going to come out on the 20 yard close wasn't it. First down and 10 on the option. And look who's back, Stith. 17 yards. It was going to be tough enough for the Hokies to take on these Knolls with Ricky Hall, Rick, with Ricky Hall and Tyrone Stith. Now without him in this football game, you can see the difference when Stith is in the football game. Here comes that option again. And look at that truck and trailer. There's the truck, there's the trailer. Just follow your guy. That's nice. That's old time football. Bull would love that one. Truck and trailer. Stick with your block. 61 yards for Stith. And that is the Hokies' first first down of the second quarter. 329 to go. Come back. Pads a popping in New Orleans. Jerry Johnson. The Knowles told us that they were going to use 25 defensive players at least in the first half of this game. They have been on this stage before. Bobby Bowden and his staff feeling that they are by far the deeper team. And over the course of a long, long evening, especially with the defensive linemen, it is very important to rotate your players. Halftime tends to run long in these situations. Second down and nine. Penalty flag flying, a free play. The Knowles were offside, and Vic makes the most of it. With the speed, he breaks free. Got an angle. Vic pushed out of bounds by Ty Cody, number 27. I've really never seen anything like it. I mean, he's not running against Temple here, he's running against Florida State, everyone. Watch this jumping off sides to the outside Vic does a little spinorama right there. Now watch this cutback all week Florida said don't state said don't let him cut back. There's the cutback now watch the speed 4 3 3 speed good block by the tight end right there Browning win and look at that acceleration. The Knowles. Use a second time out here with 2.31 to go. Florida State leads at 28 7, but Virginia Tech is threatening. Michael Vick, the electrifying redshirt freshman quarterback, coming off a 43 yard run, trying to put a second touchdown in the end zone here for the Hokies before the intermission. Second time in the red zone, just barely. Remember the first time, a fumble. To the 13 yard line. He's a big time running back. Yep, he is. I asked Ricky Bustle, the coordinator, about him, who at, 
coincidentally coached Ernest Biner at East Carolina. And I asked him, can he catch the ball? And he said, and because Ernest Biner was a great receiver for the Cleveland Browns, he said, actually, at this stage, he's a better receiver than Ernest was at the sta same stage in his career. Second down. The play fake and pick rolling hard to the left. Complete inside the 10 yard line. Derek Carter, the junior from Smithfield, Virginia, with his first catch of the game. He tried it, delivered. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And a warrior hits for the sideline. They faked the ball to him on this bootleg thing. Let's take a look and see if we can figure out what happened. Fake it to him. Corey Simon, yep, yeah, that's it. Corey Simon comes inside and puts it right on. Helmet to the knee. First down and goal. Vic changing up. Kendrick. And he powers his way to about the four yard line before he's brought down. Strong open run by Kendrick. Derek Gibson and Jamal Reynolds in on that tackle, but Kendrick was pushing the pile a little bit there. Yes, he the is. End. He's got to come through. He's got to be the guy right now. Frank Beamer without two of his stars, Stith and Ricky Hall. On top of that, it's a punt block and a punt return for touchdowns. Option, Vic going to keep it for the end zone. Touchdown. Could be a long night with Michael Vick out there. Incredible. He talked to the people at Virginia Tech, and they say, we had 999 pieces of the puzzle already set. Michael Vick was the last piece of the puzzle. Brent? As a huge piece, though. I mean, Ed, this guy is a big time player for anybody. He's going to make them that much better rushing the ball and throwing the ball the way he does. Graham, perfect on the extra point. Coming right at you, the option. Down the line, and Vic saw the daylight immediately. Gibson jumps outside, and he dashes for the end zone. And Michael Vick's running leads the Hokies 80 yards in seven plays, Gary. And now Michael has run nine times for 71 yards. Here. And that's what everybody for Virginia Tech has told us about Michael Vick. Raise the standards, raise the big time plays against West Virginia when they had to have that final drive. A minute 15 to go in the game, no timeouts. That's when Michael Vick played his best ball. That was a huge drive. And he did it with that busted play. Remember, we talked about what was the keys to the game. It was busted plays. Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, this is what both teams are playing for. This is the Sears National Championship Trophy. It's worth $30,000. This piece alone, the Waterford Crystal made in Ireland, takes three months to produce. It takes about four months to win. Don't bobble it, partner. That's valuable down there. Last year, of course, it was the Tennessee Volunteers. Won it out in Tempe. Beat the Florida State Seminoles or without Chris Winkie. Suffered a serious neck injury against Virginia and missed the Knolls last three games. Now he's back trying to win a national championship in New Orleans. Stringer coming out for the Knolls. Upended short of the 20 yard line. For the first time all game, I think you'll see the Knolls now play it conservative and go in at halftime 28 14. Your chances of running the field down with 31 seconds, only one timeout, not very good. If anything surprises me, or you, Gary, in the first half, it's the fact that Virginia Tech has rushed for 171 yards here yeah, in the first but, half. But I'll, I'll bet more than three, probably three quarters of them have been on busted plays. That's how good Michael Vick is. You got it. Look at this. It's got to be the draw. Back in the doesn't, gun. Doesn't look like it. Running back's way real wide. Cheney, a pretty good receiver, takes the inside handoff and slips out to keep the clock running. It'll stop on the first down. 
than Taylor after a 13 yard gain. Chris Winkie's looking to the sideline. He wants to go deep. You can just see him. He wants to throw the ball down one more time. Six touchdowns scored here in the first half of this BCS title game. Well, with Janikowski, you might only have to get to about the 40 yard line to let him get one of those booming kicks. Bringing the yeah, clock down, they're going to let him run out. That's very smart. They're going to take their lead on into the locker room. Well, Florida State leads it 28 14, but Michael Vick showing you that he's not going away here tonight. Let's go to Lynn Swan. Well, coach, you got a 14 point lead, but even when things are going great, I know there's something you don't like about what your team is doing. Tell us what that is. I don't like it because we had great field position down here and maybe could have put them away and did nothing. Turn around, went backwards with it. I thought uh, that, that hurt bad, and we got to get the momentum back. We get the ball in the second half, we got to get a decent return and go. Get something done, get the momentum back. What's your message to your ball club about maintaining the intensity in the second half of well, this game? Well, not only the intensity, but the contain on Vic. How in the world do you contain that guy? I mean, he like, he's all, that's, that's the key. If we could contain him, we could beat him. Coach, thank you. Talk thank to you in the second half. Watching the full championship series on ABC Sports as coverage of the Nokia Sugar Bowl continues. With Hokies head coach Frank Beamer, coach special teams in big plays killed you. You know we really played a pretty good half other than four plays, and that's not uh, that's not like us at Virginia Tech. Uh, give up two scores in the kicking game, but uh, they got a good kicking game too, good talent. Now, what did you tell the troops at halftime? So I believe we got this thing about where we wanted. Uh, really, uh, other than four plays, we we're playing well, and we just got to uh, nobody panics. Keep on uh, taking one play at a time and see if we can't get this thing done. The key, Brent, one play at a time. And here is the first one, a kickoff. Florida State gets the ball to start the second half, leading it by two touchdowns. Springer and Gardner back deep. Gardner coming out from a yard in the end zone. Donald's his way to the 21 yard line. And uh, welcome back, everybody, with Gary Daniels and I, Brian Musburger. Gary, what do we expect here in the second half? Uh, I think Florida State is going to forget all those trick plays, the shuffle passes, the rollout. They're going to drop back, find the matchup, and throw the football. Were you as surprised as all our coaches were about the performance of the special teams for the Hokies? Absolutely shocked. It was the one thing that Virginia Tech couldn't have go against them. They knew they were up against it with the talent of this team. And then have the, the special teams go against it, that was disaster. Shotgun. Swing deflected away. It was a lateral. Corey Moore. That was a lateral makes his presence felt on the first play of the second half and then points a finger to Peter Warren like this one's not over. Yeah, and, and, and again, that's the type of plays I don't think that Florida State needs to run. What are they doing? Just drop back here. You got Peter Warren right here. They're going to try to run one of these crazy screens, a bubble screen. Look at that. Ball's thrown backwards. Absolutely good, good call. And the All-American snuffed it right out, and Peter Wark got right on the ball. Corey actually took the play off, but no need to call those type of plays. Throw it downfield. And Gary, it resulted in a 16-yard loss. Back from the shotgun again. Incomplete, and that was miscommunication as Ron Dugans broke downfield. Well, it's third and 26, you know, three and out to start this. Absolutely. And good field position certainly gives the Hokies a huge lift starting the second half. Winky swings it out to Miner. Miner in a foot race breaks out. Oh my goodness. They let Miner out on third and 26. He bails them out with a 28 yard pass play from Chris Winky. Florida State was willing to punt the ball. 
They just wanted to get it out of the end zone. Mark Rick says, I'm not going to gamble here. Let's just throw it out to the flat, give it to Miner. But Virginia Tech so nervous about those receivers, nobody locks on the back, and all of a sudden, you're out of a problem. Bud Foster shocked. Third and 26, so it is first and 10. Winky with that inside handoff to his running back this time. And Miner twists his way to the 38 yard line. Back up off defensive lineman coming in the football game for Virginia Tech. Tech has done a good job. The backups, the second down linemen for Virginia Tech play about a ratio of two thirds to one thirds the play from the starters. Here he comes. On second down, Winky fires high, and it is complete for a first down. Robert Morgan, the sophomore from East Point, Georgia, makes his first catch of the game. Linebackers lined up over receivers. You always have to be aware. Chris Winkie, aware. Here comes the linebacker off the slot. Boom. One on one coverage. That's the offense. Until that's stopped, you don't call anything else. Look at it. Here's a safety out here on a wide receiver. There's a mismatch. Take it. Ball out to the man. Oh. Hit the man coming through the formation. Loose ball. Winky gets it. Winky dove back after it to make the recovery. And I think it was Anquan Bolden, the freshman, exactly right. coming through the formation, and the ball hit him. And lucky for the Knowles, Winky recovered it. What do coaches say, Brent, about these type of games? You see the ball, exactly right, gets number four, Bolden. It's not the number of brilliances that win it, it's the number of mistakes that lose it. So far, you can see the game is unfolding that way. Second and 15, and now they roll the pocket hard to the right. Winky in trouble, dropped by Bolden. Third down. Don't understand. Chris Winky is not comfortable doing that. Drop back, throw an eight yard pass. Here you come. Rolling out. Here's the guy right here. He's supposed to get the end man in the line of scrimmage. Pulling the offensive guard and upfield. Cyrus puts it right into his face. Linebacker Jamel Smith, number 46, coming hard. And now they go back to a third and 15. Remember, they bailed him out on third and 26 a few minutes ago. This is incomplete. They will punt this time. There's a look of unease in that man's face right now. Michael Vick scrambling down the field. Foster's defense after letting him hit him for a third and 26. Comes up that time on third and 15. And the Hokies with Ike Charlton, who returned two of Cottrell's punts for touchdowns in high school down in Florida. Low snap on the bounce and gets it off. There is a penalty flag down. Charlton at the 20. On the 34 yard line, 14 yard return, but the penalty flag is back at the line of scrimmage. Now, we have an SEC officiating crew in here tonight. I think Virginia Tech declines this. The ball at the 33 yard line is good enough. Shotgun for the redshirt freshman. Fires complete. Davis. Let's just, David Warren came from the sprint out. He still came from the backside and made it. Play. Michael Vick gets it off just in time. Davis with four catches for 80 yards, but 49 of them coming on his long touchdown. And Brent, Michael Vick has been hit 17 times so far in this game. Here is number 18 coming up. Late pitch, no he didn't. And Kendrick dashes for the first down across midfield and Vic avoided the hit that time. Good looking option run that time for 12 yards. 
Let's take a look at that previous play. Vic's going to come out this way. Here's the receivers to the outside, and here's Warren from the backside. Get to see all the participants in this play. This is how long it takes. Don't have much time for your quarterback. Here comes from behind. Never sees that blind side. Perfect throw to the outside leg of the receiver. ABC's triple look here tonight yeah. at the Nokia Sugar Bowl see, three and a chance of them work. to look at a lot of the combatants feel at the like same a fly. time. You know, you get to see all those things in different areas. Half a field to work with now for Vic and the Hokies. They're down two touchdowns. Davis comes in motion. Play fake. Vic rolling hard. Needs to avoid the sack. Beats the tackler. Back to the middle. Incomplete. There was a <laughs> receiver in the area. The, the Noles special. thought they had him this time. Might lose here tonight and might go on to win himself a you couple bet. of Super Bowls down the road. That's that's how talented this young man seems when you watch him. Second down and ten. Short drop, backside pressure, steps back and gets what away from it. Oh, he's Houdini. He's absolutely Houdini back there in the backfield. I've never seen no, anybody I've never quite seen like anything this. Like this is the next Siegfried and Roy. Yeah, he makes Seminoles this. disappear. This is a defensive end. This is a defensive end. Florida State made this defense famous for this. Watch this. You called it a Houdini. How do you do this? It's instincts. It's savvy, and it's 4-3, uh, 220. <laughs> and Spins it's still away going. from that guy. And now watch the speed to get outside again. He runs right by Brian Allen there. Another fast linebacker. Incredible. Third down and 16. Back again. Sets tall, deflected, almost intercepted. Derek Gibson, the rover, I think took a crap at, crack at it after the deflection, but he couldn't make the interception. But the Hokies are forced to punt. Back in the game to return another punt. There's a man, Peter Warwick, who has already returned one of them, 59 yards for a touchdown. He's also scored on a 64-yard pass play. Tibble hangs one real high, no fair catch, and going nowhere either. Good punt by Tibble and fine coverage on that at the 21-yard line. Let's check in with Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, Michael Vick has taken another stinger, but this time on his right hand, his non-throwing hand. The athletic trainer is working on it right now. So if you're left-handed and you get a hit on your right side, I guess you can live with that, but that's 18 hits on Michael Vick. If you're going to run the option, you're going to get dinged. That's why you have to be, what I say, have a gladiator physique if you're going to play this type of offense. The Knowles dash out from the sideline. Minor. And at the 24-yard line. This the play where Vic injured his hand. Let's see if we can get a close look at it. Throws the ball, it's the last play, and as he lets it go, I really don't see, you can see it, you can see him bend over, but you really don't see the hit, you just see him react to the hit. There was one time when he came to the game earlier this year without the wristband plays, so he borrowed it from the backup quarterback who happens to be right-handed. They were exactly backwards, and he ran a touchdown out of one of the plays. This time it's Dugans from Winky, and it'll be third down, and let's check in now with Lynn Swan on Seymour's injury. Well, Brent, he has a sprained right knee, and this entire preparation for this bowl game has been difficult for Seymour. He had an injured right shoulder. He suffered a little bit from the flu coming into this ball game, and now this injury. He will not come back into the game for the Seminoles. He also missed curfew and did not start the game. Played high school right here in New Orleans. Third down and eight for Winky and the Knowles. Danny Kendra directly behind him in that fullback spot. Here comes the blitz. And the penalty flags. I think it was the freshman that time, Brett Williams, number 72, that just had a little bit of a flinch. Dead ball. Ball start. 
on the offense. Five yard penalty, third down. Jack, what's up now with Vic? Well, it's the same thing, but a further update after the trainers talked to Michael. It seems that what happened is he literally caught his hand in his wrist, the right one, between two Florida Seminole helmets. That's what caused the slight sprain. They've taped it. He's cleared to go back in. Third and 13. Timeout. Called by the Seminoles. They lead it, but things have not been going their way in the second half. And Winky now facing a third and 13 with Vic patiently waiting his turn over on the side and down by two touchdowns. He's taken a lot more hits, but here's third and 13. Two tight ends for protection. Winky looking slant, pump fakes, wants Warwick deep one on one, overthrew him. The Knowles will punt again. Anthony Midget, Ike Charlton, the two corners. Such a big part of this football game. Man to man in this defense most of the time. There's Ike Charlton. Brent, I watched two practice at Virginia Tech. This guy's like a coach on the field in practice, telling people where to go. A very valuable football player for this football team. Look at that. Returning punts now with an injury. Coach Foster and his staff have done some remarkable adjustments here defensively for the Hokies. This is the fourth punt. In Florida State's last five possessions, and they force a low line drive. Here comes Charlton. Cuts free. The heat was there, and the Hokies with excellent field position. A 24 yard return. So here, Gary, is the field position coming up now that Michael Vick and the Hokies have been looking for. They've been hanging in this game, playing extremely well in the second half. Exactly right. And Florida State has done such a good job at the end of the season keeping teams from making first downs. Vic's going to throw back. He oh. threw high, caught by the fullback Hawkins. Hawkins all alone down the sideline and pushed out of bounds. A 26 yard play. Now how often do we see fullbacks just slip free like this? Great call. Best call of the football game. Expecting the blitz after a big punt return, ball in plus territory. The ammo for Mickey Andrews is to come after you. You go with the throwback screen to somebody that you would never expect to get it, and there's another shot for Michael Vick. But boy, those taste good when you can put that many yards on it. Hawkins made a slick catch too, didn't he? Yep. Kendrick. Still the tailback, he pounds straight ahead. Just shy of the 10 yard line. Andrews with his hands full against this red shirt freshman. And unbeaten Virginia Tech now. They just did not go away, even when they were down 28 7. Now you expect with a mobile quarterback to get him involved right here. Second and basically long. Instead, Kendrick attacking the middle of the Knowles defense, running right at him inside the 10, but shy of the first down. Michael Vick, you look at the Florida State defense, the last four opponents, as we're talking about third down conversions, tough to make a first down against this defense on third down. Here's where Michael Vick might be able to do his. Yep. He was signaling here. to the sideline that he wanted the boot. He was kicking his foot, trying to signal to the coach what he wanted. He wanted the boot. Let's see if he gets his call. First down marker is at the five yard line. They need about four. He fumbles the snap. Picks it up in trouble. Rackley is coming from behind and he dashes away from him. How does he do that? And an official is hit hard. The field judge goes down. He's knocked out on the, I shouldn't say knocked out, he was knocked down on the sideline. And he bounces back up. But did you see the speed? I, I can't, it's unbelievable. I, don't, I hope it shows up on television as well as it does when you're watching it in person right here. It was going to be the bootleg. Drops the snap. Now, when he picks it up, look at this guy run. That's the on Rackley number five. These are 
parade All-American 4-4 guys, and Michael Vick really complains about that late hit right there. He was clearly out of bounds, but still a tough call. Thomas is the defensive back who hit him. This is going to be a 23-yard field goal for Graham. Remember the last time they set up for a field goal around the bay? I do not think this will be the option here, folks. <laughs> And Graham pulls the Hokies three points closer with a 23 yard field goal. It's 28 17 now, Florida State. The BCS championship game, the Nokia Sugar Bowl, with a record crowd on hand, and Virginia Tech showing a lot of courage. It's 28 17 after the field goal by Graham. Their fans who travel so well during the regular season have shown up in force here in New Orleans. Get the feeling 28 points is not enough for Florida State to win this game. Take a knee and it'll come out. We want to go back on this scramble by Vic and I want you to watch the field judge as he goes out of bounds on this play. Ben Oldham has the call. Thomas is going to hit him after he's out of bounds. But watch what happens now. Watch the official. He gets knocked to skew. Might he have called it? Might he have called it if he was standing there? I can't answer that. Only Ben could be able to tell well, us. But that would have been first and goal had they called the play. Yeah, now, half the crowd thinks it was a bad call. Half thinks a good call. Exactly. <laughs> Gary, last five possessions for Florida State. 19 plays, only 46 yards. That's since they were ahead 28 to 7. Winky fires incomplete. Midget. Great hit by Midget. Why can't Florida State get the ball to Peter? And Corey Moore. Is in the slot. Corey Moore not on the field right now. He does come out during games sometimes. Shotgun. And it was four minutes. Midget diving up over the top. And Minnis makes the grab. The junior from Miami. That's his first catch of the night. Florida State is not getting time to throw the ball downfield. The pass rush of the Hokies has changed the game plan now. They press at the box. Winky being blitzed. And the Hokies just keep turning the heat up. We talk all week that it's man to man matchups. But when you have man to man matchups, you got to make it go. You got a quarterback taking a hit, good throw to the outside, can't come up with the catch that time, Marvin Minnis. Cottrell standing on the Knowles 11 yard line. Drives Charlton inside the 20. Now starts upfield. Got an alley. Midfield. Charlton, who returned two of Cottrell's punts for touchdowns in high school, brings this one back 45 yards. on the field remember deep punt first good punt by Florida State kind of out kick and look at the blocking one right there here comes another one right there another one right there here it's comes against, another one right there Four it's good against Florida State this is going to count coming right at you this time remember this is the backup this is the second punt returner it is against Florida State it's going to stand. And punter Keith Cottrell has to save the day. Doesn't he for the yes, he does. Now Michael Vick back in business. Michael dances off to the right off his own lineman. Now going to fire downfield. Incomplete at the goal line. Davis the receiver. Tay Cody with coverage. 
Well, there it is right here, the shotgun. Here's the receiver he's going to go to, going down the field. Watch this, a little spin. Wanted to go to the hook and go, but not enough time. Now the quarterback fix, just throwing it up for grabs. Help me, help me, receiver, knock this baby down. That's what the receiver did that time. Davis comes back and makes sure it's not intercepted. Frank's holding his heart. <laughs> Look at that. Second and ten. Sean Witten in as a receiver. Option look. Vic going to keep it short of the first down. At the Louisiana Superdome in New Orleans, the Nokia Sugar Bowl for the championship. The two unbeatens, Florida State and Virginia Tech. And Tech has returned kickoffs and punts 206 yards in this game. And they are hanging in the neighborhood with a big third and three inside the 30 yard line. The marker is at the 26. The pitch, Kendrick, first down, end zone ahead. Touchdown, Hokies! 29 yards. of offensive plays shotgun deep balls option power the whole now package they, now they'll go for two trailing by five they'd like what? to put it a field goal away I know you don't I don't like this, this I like it to be a four-point game because if Florida State kicks a field goal then it's just a seven-point game I don't like to chase these points all game I think Frank Beamer wants to quickly go to work on it too. Yeah. Judging from what he said Watch to Vic, that's that basketball thing, you know, pick the tempo up and you're gonna do this. Right there, the good pitch to the outside and a great cutback that time. Setting up the blockers, Hendrick comes back and cuts it up. That's exactly how the option play is supposed to work. Once he got into the secondary, Kendrick saw that goal item, took it right to the pylon. After the return, remember it was Charlton with that fabulous punt return, giving them field position. And Frank Beamer's Hokies go 36 yards in three plays. And one other thing we can say about Virginia Tech, not only do they have an electrifying quarterback, but they have a very good coaching staff. Bobby Bowden and the Knowles are in for the battle of their lives now. We said all week, Brent, that the longer Virginia Tech stays in the game, the pressure would shift to Florida State. First two-point conversion attempt this year. I guess when you go 11-0 and you beat everybody up, you don't have to go for two. I guess they saved a good play for this. Pick, fake the handoff. Loose, incomplete. So the two-point conversion fails, and Florida State's lead is 28 to 23. Going to try to hit the slant play to the left side of the field to Thomas, the outside receiver, fake it inside, hold the linebackers. Vic's going to try to throw the slant right in this area right there. Doesn't have it. Actually drops the ball on the play because the coverage was so good he tried to stop the throw. Sixteen unanswered points for the Hokies. Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, when the Hokies tried to start to climb the mountain to Division I respectability, the coaches got together and said, we need a symbol. They came up with a simple lunchbox. The concept being, we go to work every day like a blue-collar worker. We take it one hour at a time. We bring in the hardest efforts and check in and check out. The lunchbox comes to every game. It sits here entrusted to the defense in year 2000's national championship game. And they'll go back to work, Jack. Trailing it by five. And Florida State has been unable 
to move the football. And I have got to go back in the second quarter when the Knowles lead at 28 7. And suddenly Michael Vick from out of nowhere drives the Hokies down pulls them away in 14 at the end of the half. The game has not been the same since. Maddox the freshman. Oh boy. And down he goes as the Hokies bring it now. Florida State has to go back to that first game plan. They got to find their All-American Peter Warwick. Heck with the trick plays, the shuffle passes. Let's find this guy right here. Little one-on-one -on -one route out there. Florida State, their last 22 plays, only 52 yards. Frankie Warwick's got it. Does a dance. And the freshman corner, we've got a penalty flag. As Ronyell Whitaker, the freshman out of Norfolk, Virginia, going at it with Warwick down here. A dead ball foul might be against Peter Warwick here, huh? Could have been either one of them, the freshman or the senior. Uh, I thought. Yeah, they were both sort of yeah. pushing. Yep. Looks like it's going to be against the Knowles. Dead ball. Here it comes. He's open by 15 yards on this play. And at the end, tries to do two. Actually, he stepped out of bounds before it. See, it's a dead ball foul, I think. And then right at the end of the play, he kind of shoves it away. Let's see if he hits him in the face. Yep, right in the face mask. I guess my only question is should an official have stepped in when he stepped out of bounds and blown yep. the whistle and ended it Didn't right get there. there quick enough did he. So here's the play it was a first down a dead ball foul so it brings it back and the Knowles get another first down. Attempt here. Ball is inside the 20 yard line. Rinky under pressure goes deep and it's intercepted at the 40 yard line by Midget. Anthony Midget, the senior from Clewiston, Florida, intercepts Winky's pass. Florida State tries to get greedy here. Keeps in the tight end, keeps in the backs here. They try to go max protection, just a two man route. The only thing Chris Winky doesn't do is find the safety. Just throws this ball up for grabs, feels the pressure. Here comes the safety. Gets the ball at a critical mistake from your quarterback. Winky feels the pressure. Two man pass route on this play. You have to find the safety on this one if you're a quarterback, a young quarterback, a college quarterback, or a professional quarterback. Inexcusable. First turnover of this game by the Knowles. Virginia Tech trailing by five, but absolutely dominant in this championship game right now. And Vic goes down. <laughs> Michael Vic. Tripped as he pulled away from the center, so it will be second down coming up. I want to go back to Midget right there. That young man is over by Lake Okeechobee out of Clewiston. His mother had just enough money to come either to his graduation or to this game. She went to the graduation. Some folks down in the Palm Beach area raised enough money to send her and a couple of her friends over to this game. They drove up from South Florida. And my, how his mom must have enjoyed that interception. Now Michael Vick on a pump fake comes firing the screen to the fullback. First down. Out of bounds inside the 40 yard line as Cullen Hawkins, the junior from Pittsburgh, goes for 23 more yards. And look at what the Hokies have found. Ricky Bustle, you got to give it to him. Offensive coordinator for Virginia Tech. Right now, he's in a rhythm. What a fake the flare screen to one side. Watch Michael Vick drop back. Fake it one way. Out sneaks the fullback. And now watch the blocking here. And you'll see the alley right there. Look at that. Good blocking up there. It's exactly how you do it. You get those guys out there and screen the play team. Right now, Ricky Bustle's in a groove, calling plays. Kendrick has his tail back. Dances to the right. To the 36 yard line.
a very interesting moment in this football game because when we were in Tallahassee and I was speaking with Coach Bowden, I said, Bobby, if Virginia Tech stays close to you in the fourth quarter or gets ahead, I think the pressure switches over on your sideline as the favorite. Now, he quickly disagreed and said he'd been behind. I said, Virginia Tech hadn't, but I believe it now. Second down and eight. Vic Dashen back. Here he comes again. Electrifying. First down at the 20 yard line. 15 more yards. And have you ever no. seen anything like this? Bobby Rhodes, number 49, right here, is unblocked. Watch this. He can't catch him. He's a 4 6 player. Yeah, you can't catch 4 3. I've never seen a guy. Now, if Michael Vick is just a runner, he's not going to have this effect on a football game. But this package, like I said, it's the holy grail. It's what coaches are looking for. This is the holy grail of a quarterback in the next century. My, oh, my, 14 carries for 87 yards. Okay. In trouble now. And he'll go down on the best of play at the 29 with Jamal Reynolds closing in. So the Florida State Seminoles, who once led this game, in case you just joined us, 28 to 7. You can see what they have allowed rushing. And tonight, Virginia Tech has hit them for 236 yards. Vic, 87 of those yards. Mickey Andrews has never seen an avalanche like this. There's the man. Mickey, he's calm. He just looked the whole play sheet right now to the offensive coordinator. Looks like a menu at a restaurant. Pick out anything, they all taste good. Second and long. Option for Vicky keeps it, dashes upfield, 15 10. Near the five yard line, it is first and goal for the amazing Vic and Virginia Tech. 22 more yards. He now is over 100 yards rushing. On Brent, the day. Some good blocking going on here. Watch the pancake get these two outstanding tackles. There it is, right there, number 59. Lambo just takes his man down. Vic. One side, the other side, the bootleg, the screen, the deep ball, the whole package. Anthony Lambo. First and goal. Kendrick steps to the middle, touchdown! Hokies lead it! Hokies lead it on the six-yard run, trailing 28-7. They come back, and Beamer says we'll try two again. Of line, watch this block sealing down inside. Matt Lair, number 69. There's that block, just takes a defensive tackle. Corey Simon, a All American, right out of the play. Pick from the shotgun with Kendrick to his left. Fires and knocked away. Gibson comes up to make a strong defensive play. But the Hokies have put 22 unanswered points on the scoreboard here in New Orleans. Sprint option, slot option right down here to the bottom of the screen. Ball's a little bit behind that time. Tapped away from Andre Davis. There's no re-voting in this Heisman thing, is there? <laughs> it's done, isn't it? Well, let's go back to what Coach Bowden was talking about when they were behind. And we asked Bobby, can you come back now if you fall behind in this game? That might be one advantage we got. We've been behind a lot more than them. We've been behind. Hey, if you ain't ever been behind now, you don't know how your kids are going to play. We've been behind more than them. Bobby, I think it has been answered. They play very well. 22 unanswered points now, and Virginia Tech leads it 29 to 28. And now, doesn't Frank Beamer wish he had kicked both extra points? Absolutely. I'm always for the one point. I'm a one-point man, so it would have been 31-28. You know that. I've got more than 
one point. I just mean on these extra point deals, right? Exactly. Here. No, I understand. <laughs> no, I, I'm, just, I'm, I'm with kidding you myself. You haven't lost um, <laughs> You get back into this football game now. Florida State has tried everything. Four wide receivers, two tight ends, one tight end play action pass. Don't go for the home run. Take the easy throw. Well short of the 20 yard line. The big difference in this game in the second half has been the performance of Virginia Tech's special team. They surrendered two touchdowns in the first half in case you just joined us. One on a block punt and the second on Peter Warwick's 59 yard return for a touchdown. That was the last Seminole score. It put them up 28 to 7. Since then, Vic has gone in from three yards. Graham's kicked a 23 yarder. Kendrick has scored two touchdowns for him. And now they lead it as you see how dominant the Hokies have become. Winking. Play fake. Sidearms the ball. And Warwick out of bounds. You get the feeling. You get the feeling that when we saw Bowden on the sideline next to his senior star that he said to him, Peter, it is now time. Yep. Let's go. We don't have to get it all in one play. The front seven, though, those seven guys inside, six seniors, 17 letter winners. These guys have played a lot of football against a lot of good football teams. That's why they didn't crack at halftime. Shotgun running away in trouble. Going to take two hits as Carl Bradley cleans up with the fourth. Virginia Tech sack. Let's go to Lynn Swan. Well, Brent, one of the things I've noticed in this ball game for Florida State's offense, when they get into trouble, is not is when they don't take advantage of what the defense gives them, and they try and press. They try and force the ball into their star player, Peter Warren. They also need another receiver to pick up the slack. On their first touchdown drive of the ball game, Ron Dugan made a key first down catch that seemed to relax Peter Warwick. They have to continue to play that way, then the big things will happen. It is third down and eight. They have gotten the ball to Warwick five times for 120 yards. And they fire back to Minnis in the middle. And Marvin Minnis with a first down at the 38 yard line, his second. Reception of the night for 19 yards. Well, Lynn was right on, and they come to Minnes. But what happened, I think, is Florida State lost a little confidence in those receivers, a couple of drops, and I think Bobby Bowden and Peter Warwick said, hey, get me the ball. I can beat him. Larry Austin replaces Charlton on one corner. And Winky, here's Bolden, the freshman, his first reception for the Knowles to the 41-yard line. Played six years, Winky did, in the Toronto Blue Jays organization before coming back to Florida State. Coach Bowden had always promised him that if he ever gave up on baseball, there'd be a scholarship waiting. And now the junior quarterback, second down and five, final seconds of the third quarter. Inside handoff. Cheney, short of the first down. Bobby Bowden with a close look at that scoreboard as Virginia Tech at the end of the third quarter leads it 29 to 28. So this year the BCS championship game comes to the Nokia Sugar Bowl and I would say it is better than advertised. We come down to the final quarter. One point separating two unbeatens. Both of them trying to go home with the Sears National Championship trophy. 29-28. Virginia Tech leads it. This is third and three. Under pressure, yeah. Winky. It'll depend on the spot. It didn't well, appear right like he line. got it. Right at Did the Did not line. get it. I don't well, let's see if the nose of that football. I might have spoken yeah. too quickly. Right at their line right there. That was Larry Austin, number 24. Neither Ike Charlton or Ronnell Whitaker, number two and number three, are in the football game. 
Good matchup, but a good job by Austin. Nope. Now what? Decision time for Mr. Bowden. I don't think there's any choice. He's got to go for this. He can't give that ball back to Michael Vick right now. His defense is dog tired. Here it comes. Fourth down and one. Now remember against Florida, they use two different quarterbacks to sneak rather than winking. Marcus Outson, who was the emergency quarterback a year ago and led the Knowles into the championship game by beating the Florida Gators in Tallahassee is in on this fourth and short. But the Knowles burn a timeout to get there as Winky watches from the sideline. Outson, an option quarterback, has been a good runner. Virginia Tech obviously accepts pressure. They toss instead, and it's Miner running for the first down, swinging free, and he is out of bounds inside, and now the yellow comes flying along the sideline. A 16 yard run and there may be more damage tacked on against Beamer and the Hokies. Let's sort this one out. You know with Outson in the football game everyone thought it was going to be the quarterback sneak. Virginia Tech slanted and pinched their lineman inside. The pitch goes outside. Kind of a gamble call. Imagine Brett if it didn't work we'd all be up here second guessing. But everybody's coming in expecting the quarterback sneak. See the slants? Goes outside and Miner just outruns the quarterback again, Nick Sorensen. Don't want to pick on him, but that's the type of guy that they have to try to take advantage of. Gary, when you've coached right there and you yep, can see the 15 uh, more yards. I don't mind damage. going for it on fourth down, but I hate it when we burn timeouts to do it. Now only one left in the game for Lenoles. Jamel Smith, guilty of that personal foul, puts the ball. On the Tech 23 yard line with the first down. Chris Winky back in. Match up to the top of the screen. Just man to man out here. Off coverage. Winky sees it on the outside. Comes in underneath it. Jeff Cheney out of Lake Wales, Florida. Still battling his way like he did against Florida. He was a big time performer. And that game in the swamp. Travis Miner injured his ankle slightly against Florida, could not finish up, and Cheney came through. That's not the case in this game. Miner's all right. The game plan was to get Cheney in. He's a good receiver. As uh oh, Anthony Midget. One of the guys, Virginia Tech, they've already lost two guys I didn't think they could lose and win the football game. So I'm, I'm going to just keep quiet on this one. They might have more guys like him on the sideline. the hand of freshman Bolden threw a little bit high and now it looks like Charlton is taking himself out of this game. He's limping off to the sideline. Now you've got both of well, their starting players. I, I would think Midget looked good enough to come back in the game. It's going to be a flat. There he is right to the outside. A flat and up throw you think Winky should make. He's got a touchdown here. Just throws it a little too hard. Not enough air in the game on the ball. Travis Miner alongside Winky. Four wideouts. Miner slips, goes nowhere. Third down. One thing Bowden has in his hip pocket is a Janikowski field goal down here. If they don't turn it over, at least would for the moment. Yes. Gain them a two-point lead. But Rick and the Knowles have got to be thinking we need some oh, touchdowns absolutely. against Vic. It's a dangerous time. Third and long. This close to the goal line, but. On the other hand, Virginia Tech has both of their starting corners out of the game right now. Charlton and Midgen are in. Number two, Whitaker. Number 24, Austin, are playing man to man against these no receivers. They bring in tight end Ryan Sprague and fullback Dan Kendra for some protection. They'll try to slip Miner out. They go end zone. Touchdown, Dugans. Perfect call. Ron Dugans, the senior from Tallahassee. 
young kids. They went after the young kids. I think it's a busted assignment. You're not supposed to break down when a running back goes in motion and switch off. The corner went out for the running back, and that produced the mismatch. Here's the running back. Look at the corner go out and switch, and then you got a mismatch inside. Running back goes, you should not switch. Look at that. Two guys covering, one out here, no one covering the wide receiver. It's tough to have your corners that have played all year it, on the sideline like that. Big, big difference, buddy. Now it's the Knowles turn to go for two. And I don't like it here either. <laughs> <laughs> You're consistent. Exactly. Man. Give What's you. wrong with a six-point lead? <laughs> and now Virginia Tech burns a timeout. A record crowd of 79,280. On hand at the Louisiana Superdome, and not many folks heading for the exits on this one. It has been a dandy. 12:59 to go. This is the two-point conversion after the pass from Ricky to Dugans put the Knowles back in the lead for the Deuce. Got it, Warwick. Florida State. Recaptures the lead. 36 29 is against a battered secondary. Peter Warwick slips free for the two point conversion. The battle for the national championship between number one and number two. And Florida State finally on the board in the second half. They march 85 yards in 11 plays, four minutes and 14 seconds. Emphasis on the battle. It's not coming easy, either one of these teams. Michael Vick out of Newport News Virginia can you imagine how good a pitcher he was in high school how would you like to have stepped in against his fastball when you're a 13 year old youngster the way he brings it now let's see if Janikowski can bring the kickoff not sure the Knowles have been overly happy with him so far today at the goal line Kendrick left return surrounded. Now let's go back to his days in high school where he was described as a young Randall Cunningham. That's Remember him in the Ronald Florida State. Curry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing their colors back in high school. You see where he thought he was stopped? He was yeah, dancing exactly. around in those days. Unbelievable. Folks, he's 6'1", 215 pounds, runs the 40 and 433, benches 320, squats 500, and he's got a 40-inch vertical leap. On top of all that, he played in the shadow of Ron Curry in Virginia at that time. I think that helped his resolve to be a good football player. On the run, juggled out of Davis's hands. Couldn't hold on. From the gun. Inside shovel pass Kendrick for the first down. Derek Gibson with the stop after a gain of 12 yards. Now Virginia Tech's possessions here in the second half. What a second half. One punt, then they caught their second win. Field goal first, and then it's momentum all the way. They've been feeling it. Ricky Bustle, the coordinator, has been able to call plays. Anything he grabs right now, he feels good with. Four wide receivers. I bet this is going to be some kind of quarterback draw. Takes the inside handoff and then did take off on a quarterback draw. Took a fumble. Florida State football inside the 35 yard line. He's only made a couple of mistakes in this football game. Turning the wrong way on the goal line is a perfect call again. Quarterback draw off of the fake. Here he comes. Got the ball kind of waving a little bit. Coming from behind. Is it Pocus? Yes. It's the helmet that time. Bobby Rhodes from behind really didn't go for it actually just diving on the play from behind doesn't quite get to the quarterback in his helmet hits right on the football. 
One of the Sean interesting Key recovers it. Excuse me, Brent. One of the interesting things. Is... Gibson, the rover, down on the field. The third tech turnover of the night and the second fumble by Michael Vick. First down and 10 for Florida State with 11.58 left in the battle for the BCS National Championship and medical attention over there on the sideline for Derek Gibson. Cheney still in as the Florida State running back with the first call steps lively out to the right with a quick first step breaks free out of bounds inside the 10 yard line. Bobby Bowden going back to his roots a little bit. I formation running the tailback. Cheney comes in years ago. This used to be the Florida State offense. I formation, play action passes. No one has changed better as the game has changed than Bobby Bowden. Now it's Travis Minor. Toss to him. Kendra leads him. And he stopped at the 10 yard line. Michael Hawks, the inside linebackers out of Blackstone, Virginia, senior, playing in his last game here for the Hokies. This man has done a fine job, and he sure is a nice man to be around. First time I'd had any opportunity to talk or spend any time with his coaching staff, and he strikes me as so down to earth. There's Coach Foster, who simply one of the best. In case you just joined me, that's yeah, the one. man that Steve Spurrier wanted to get when Bob Stoops became the head coach at. At Oklahoma, he decided to stay loyal to Frank here. Jeff Cheney back on the field. Play fake in trouble, steps away from Moore, and now Winky throws it away in the middle of the field. Grounding, there's no one there. Not even a receiver. I wonder if the tight end was knocked down on that. I think they were trying to go to Pierre Warwick, and it was bracketed by Virginia Tech. You see Frank Beamer. He said, we got one like that early. Chris Winky was just trying to get rid of it. Peter Work bracketed to the outside. He wanted to go slant corner to the top of the screen top and nothing there. Good defense. Right here, here's the end of the play. Trying to go to work all the way. Everybody else is staying in. Feels the pressure. Doesn't really even look. Just turns around and throws it. That's grounded. Third down and goal. Set the screen. Cheney in trouble. Penalty flag. Thrown at the nine yard line. Back it up against Bowden's boys. But you think about these two coaches, the one thing they share in common is loyalty with their assistant coaches. Both of these staffs have been the respective block, places. Block, block, against the offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Janikowski time. And there is Coach Foster, both, the defensive coordinator. Yes, both Bud Foster. And Ricky Bussell have been with Frank since 1987. Ricky Bussell left for a year but came back. But Foster's been there the entire time. Thirty two yards for Sebastian Janikowski. Who knows maybe that was his last field goal for Florida State. Remember he's going to turn professional needs the money to bring his mother Helena over from Poland. Time out. Quickly to Lynn Swan. Well guys Mickey Andrews is a defensive coordinator for the Seminoles and he keeps going up against Ricky Bustle's offense. He's the offensive coordinator. They go way back. Ricky Bustle was a defensive assistant under Mickey Andrews at Clemson in 1977. But 1983, they both ended up in Phoenix coaching the USFL team, the Wranglers. What happened was they hired Ricky Bustle. When they hired Mickey Andrews, they took Bustle, moved him to the offensive side, and that began his offensive career. Mickey right now is probably wishing, why did he leave the defense? 
Yeah, I would say. Right? There's Janikowski oh, pounding this way. That's what we expect. Right? That's halfway to Warsaw. Well, you know why? It's now just getting to be Janikowski time. It's getting late at night now. <laughs> see, he's used to being out this late. <laughs> that's right. See, that's the international rule right. that Coach Bowden was preaching. <laughs> he was out. I this want is his this time. man to be ready near midnight Eastern time. <laughs> you bet. He's just getting his legs. <laughs> <laughs> they tell me. Folks who saw him play soccer over in the Daytona Beach area, they tell me he was a whale of a soccer player. He'd move around, very athletic. <laughs> and uh, so, anybody needs a field goal kicker in the NFL, you got to think about Sebastian, and you'll get a character along with it. Let me tell you that. First down and ten. There's the end around with Andre Davis, the speedster, trying to get him some running room. First down and a gain of 16 yards with Bradley Jennings coming from behind to make a pretty good lick on him. Huh? Davis has had the one big catch, scored two touchdowns this year on reverses, but that was a good start of a series for Virginia Tech. Take your time, 10 minutes to go in this football game. No reason to go too fast. Put a touchdown on, put the pressure back on the Nolans. First down and 10. Big in trouble. Brian Allen makes the stop. Second down. Kendrick. You would have to think, Gary, and it would certainly be understandable if Michael Vick. We're just a little bit tired. You know, I, I know he's, yeah, he's 19 a lot years of hits. old, but yeah, you run as much. Now, we're, you just count his yards he's rushed for. All the scrambling he's done behind the line of scrimmage has to take his toll. But remember, keep thinking back to that West Virginia game. When it was on the line, he had that tank ready to go and make plays at the end of the game. Yeah, that, that saved their season, you bet. Third down at eight. Vic tried to dance for Corey and he's Simon. pounded with Corey Simon, the All-American nose guard, the first to hit him. Jerry Johnson inside the tackles. Now there, folks, <laughs> they're looking for the fairgrounds. They came in here to the wrong arena. So we've got some security down there. 8.17 to go. I don't know about Michael Vick running out of gas, but it's, that was the first time I've seen the defensive line for Florida State dominate the offensive line for Virginia Tech. No one blocked anyone in that series. Peter Warwick, and it's a fake. Sorensen short of the first down. With 7.55 to go, Frank Beamer and the Hokies let it all hang out on a fourth down gamble. See, I don't mind that one. I think it, it's worth it. Seven, eight minutes to go in the game. You're down 10 points. I mean, why leave it in the bag, right? Let's go for it. Try to get the win. Sorensen, right? There it is. There's the ex-quarterback. Direct snap. Option play again. Cuts up field. Perfect play to the outside that time. Gets it. Goes as far as he can and doesn't get it. One more look. The end of this play. Nick Sorensen goes all the way through. It kind of gets sandwiched in there and then the last thing that hits the ground is his head with the helmet. I wonder if he's a little bit shocked by that play with his head hitting the ground. Looked to me like two helmets hit him from the right side and the left side. Might have got him in the ribs. You know we've talked so much about Sebastian Janikowski. We did ask him why do you want to turn professional next year after your junior season. I mean I could come back for my senior and just to stay you know help those guys help the team do what I do but well, I talked to my parents and my mom is really important to me so I can send her some money you know help her out or either bring her here or just live with me. That's a great thought. Here's Winky going deep works all alone. Penalty flags down touchdown touchdown Florida State. 43 yards and Peter Warwick a night of redemption his third touchdown of this championship game the reason why he came back as a senior he told us was to win a ring and a championship trophy held to only one catch last year by Tennessee and 
Danielle Whitaker, the freshman, was matched up. The ball was underthrown, and the All-American made the play. Interference called. He still came up with the catch. Janikowski trots back onto the field. The highest scoring Sugar Bowl of all time is going to go down in the record books in the BCS championship game. One on one. Everybody in the stadium knew it was going to be one on one. Right here. Here's number two, the freshman. The All American is just straight down the field. Play action pass. Winky throws it too late, does not throw it far, far enough. Watch work. He has to reach back. He gets hit. Ball bobbles, and he makes the catch. Great concentration. Interference would have been called. Remember, college would have been just a 15 yard penalty. Look at that concentration from Peter Warwick. Cleveland Brown fans, are you watching? Is this the guy you take? Give Tim Couch some firepower. You know, I lean a little bit to LeVar Arrington. <laughs> 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 oh, there he is. You bet. Story is Chris Winkie in this football game. Since the interception, when he went, didn't look off the safety, eight for ten, two touchdowns. Made a mistake, very similar to a year ago when he had that interception game against North Carolina State. He went on to finish off the season today. He throws the interception, comes back, two touchdown passes. Chris Winkie, to that man right there, Peter War. Well, as you all know, the celebrated situation involving Peter Warwick suspended a couple of games. His teammate and friend, Lavernius Coles, kicked off of the team. And I asked Peter Warwick, what have you learned from this year? I know I messed up, true indeed. But, you know, I learned from my mistakes, and I feel like God has a better plan for me. And, you know, it's time for me to just move on and not worry about what I did and just worry about what I have to do. The plan tonight. Six catches, 163 yards, and three touchdowns. One on a punt return and two receptions. Vic in trouble. That's the fifth sack of the game against a young man who we will be hearing an awful lot about in the next couple of years. Not the type of game. Obviously, throughout the whole year this year, Michael Vick only threw 17 or more passes in three games, and usually when he was throwing, they were ahead. They threw when they wanted to throw, not in this situation. Wearing down, but he gave us a great show, didn't he? Sure did. That offensive line's wearing down, too. He waited with Mickey Andrews and Coach Bowden and the rest of them to start talking about this young man after the game. And Unbelievable. And the nerves that were there on the Florida State sideline. Let's go to Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, the much much heralded defense for the Virginia Tech Hokies is being decimated. Nick Sorensen is out for the rest of the game with a concussion, and Ike Troughton. Well, the problem with Troughton on the offensive side of the ball is the fact that they've asked him to go in, and he says, "I'm still cramped up." He's been back here, and he refuses to go back in, and he still hurts. And Jack Michael Vick's pass is knocked away, and you can just sort of in the building and I'm sure many of you watching on television now you can feel the noose tightening around a young man who gave us a, a spectacular performance. I would vote for him clearly as the MVP of this game even Absolutely. if he doesn't win it. I think it's been unbelievable. Yeah, I mean tonight. Peter Warwick has a claim but uh, it is, he kept his team in. I mean this is a team that is not in this football game without that guy right there. Literally in this game or in the game both ways. And look who's back set to return a punt. And Virginia Tech is going to call a timeout. Peter Warwick out there at the 45 yard line. Because already tonight, Peter Warwick with three touchdowns, the 64 yard reception, the
the punt return. And finally, the dagger. Peter Warwick. That little trouble cost him the Heisman and the Bolitnikov. And one of the things he wanted to show tonight is that he feels he is the best receiver in college football today. I think he is. Maybe more than that, he wants to show he's the best player in college football today. He might have a legitimate argument about that. A lot of good ones. Number seven's got a good argument. Number 33 of Wisconsin does too. And and your man, I mean everybody else is really. Lamar Eric is not a bad football player. A lot of good stories developed yes. this year, didn't they, in he college really football? You know, and this BCS thing's working pretty good. I hate, you know, I mean, yeah. it's, it's two pretty good games here. I say a good football game. A little short on the punt. It's going to take a Florida State hop in down around the 40 yard line. And you can see the New Orleans Arena right there where they sold tickets to this overflow crowd. They went inside to watch the game on the big screen. Folks over there, I hope you enjoyed the action tonight. It has been a wonderful football game. 6 11 to go. The highest scoring Sugar Bowl of all time. Florida and Florida State. Had put 72 on the board. And whistle dead, Cheney slipping down. Brent, you get to this point in the game now with six minutes, you look at Chris Winkie. Now he'll be if he winning this game, and he, and he should win it, obviously. 21 and 1 as a starter, 27 years old. Brent in the National Football League this year. 22 different starting oh quarterbacks were younger than Chris Winkie is right now. He has not announced whether he's turning pro, but I think it's my opinion, he needs to move on. I think he's good enough to play at the next level. Got a good arm. I think it's time. I think Michael Vick's ready to play at the next <laughs> level, but it's not legal. <laughs> Second down at 13. Here's Cheney. Let's go down below to Lynn Swan. Lynn. Well, Brent, the Sears National Champion Trophy since its inception in 1993, counting this Sugar Bowl has been at 50 different sites. And the first team to win this trophy, Florida State Seminoles. And they are obviously trying to make sure that they are the first team in the 21st century to also win this trophy. Just a sidebar, the person who owns this company, Waterford that makes it crystal, Dr. Anthony O'Reilly, actually won the equivalent of the Heisman Trophy while he was a student at Oxford. Brent? Thank you, Lynn. Way again, knocked away. Play. The freshman, Whitaker, showed some speed there. Whitaker, just a freshman, came from behind. That ball was better thrown than the last one. Florida State coaches thought that maybe, just maybe, this young man's one of their better uh, defensive I, backs. I don't think there's any doubt he's got the potential to be. He runs well. He was their third defensive back in all season this time, and he's got the speed that they look for. It was one on one coverage too. no help all over the field. Control. Nobody back. They'll come out on the 20 yard line. You look at Bobby Bowden's 23 years and he has never been unbeaten. They have lost every time out but tonight coach Bowden appears headed for his first ever unbeaten season and his second national championship. When you go back and take a look at Bobby Bowden by the numbers it is just unbelievable. 13 straight seasons 10 or more wins. Michael Victor Davis and he is dropped by Thomas there's the inside shovel pass to Kendrick and you know as I look at Michael Vick I am uh, just reminded by our folks down the truck that Steve Young is going to join our pregame show on Saturday and I got to tell you looking at Vick. He's got a little bit of Steve Young in him, and uh, 
Steve, I don't know if you ever ripped like he was, but no, uh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> but and, and maybe a, a, a tenth of a second faster in the 40, and Steve yeah, was probably yeah. as fast as they went as a quarterback. Pick is back. Complete. First down, Virginia Tech, 338, and Emmett Johnson for 23 yards that time. Florida State is conceding yards now for time off the clock. Brent, you told the story about Bobby Bowden. I mean, this is a guy who came to Florida State, found a home, and really built a dynasty. This is a dynasty now. There's no doubt about that. The way this team has played in college football, the way parity has gone to have the record he has, he's attracting the top talent in the country. Pick fires again. This one to Davis. Getting to the corner, trying to get it turned, but Gibson would not let him free. 23 more yards, however, and the heart the Hokies demonstrated in here is something because Florida State had him down and almost out in the first half when it was 28-7. Back came Michael and the Hokies. They put on the show, took the lead in the third quarter. Even without their best running back, Stith, who went out with an injury. Then finally, Mickey Andrews and the Knowles defense settled things down out there. The offense did the rest. Peter Warwick for another touchdown. 46-29. And the Hokies driving right back down the field. For the end zone, incomplete, but a penalty flag is thrown. Tay Cody, number 27 that time, had his man wrapped up. Go back to Michael Vick again. I mean, you, you see the penalty. It's going to be holding against Florida During State. During the pass, holding on the defense, half the distance to the goal from the previous spot, Automatic first down. One of the great moves that Virginia Tech did a year ago was to redshirt this guy. Remember? Al Clark was even injured. The temptation was to put him in the football game. But Frank Beamer said, no, I'm going to wait for 1999 season, and it has paid off in a run for the national championship. Redshirting Michael Vick was the best thing that ever happened to him. And on first down, Vick fires incomplete, and it will be second down. Virginia Tech has enjoyed that magical season. They were forced to the wall by West Virginia. Got hit by two guys on this one, I believe. At least two were coming at him. Shotgun gets rid of it quick, throws it. Boom, there's one, there's two coming from two sides that time. Second down. Take the lot to get this guy out again, isn't it? It's amazing. I think the clock uh, was running and it wasn't supposed to be running is what happened is the uh, Virginia Tech sideline exploded. And of course, Coach Bowden said, come on, run that. That can't be fast enough <laughs> for me. Let me get out of here away from that number seven. It's an incomplete pass. And let's get some let's get some seconds back on it. No. Uh, you know, I've got a moment here. There are so many folks I want to thank who've made our lives so much easier this year. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Howard Katz. The executive producer of college football is John Filippelli. The coordinating producer of ABC's college football and producer of tonight's game is Bob Goodrich. Directed by Drew Essikoff. Technical director is Doug Schmidt and Mike Herklotz. Our associate producers, Mitch Green, Chris Pfeiffer. And Patrick McManus. Our associate director is Brian Gordon. The production managers, Lynn Cadden and Kelly Nagy. Our technical operations manager, Jimmy Lakata. Assistant to the producer, ZNX, Drew Kaliski, and Larry Tiscornia. The computer stats, Craig Rothberg. Thanks to one and all who have helped us. Second down now for Michael Vick. 2.40 to go in this game. Vic runs daylight and down at the five yard line and of course finally thanks to our stats man Roger Riley and our spotter all season long Brian Mobleson. It has been a fabulous college football season and it has all come down to Mr. Bowden here 
13 straight years among the Associated Press's top four. Played for the national championship three times in the last four years. And in 24 years, folks, he's had only one losing season in Tallahassee. That was his first when they went five and six. Vic firing, caught, and driven out of bounds at the three yard line. Forward progress stopped right there. They continue to wind the clock with Andre Davis going out of bounds. Wonderful family man, been a friend for a long time. Says he has no thoughts about retiring. He and his lovely wife, Ann, six children, 21 grandchildren. I think all six are here tonight. Well, why should you, you do interviews while your team runs a flea flicker? <laughs> <laughs> it's easy, right? You know, he's a little hoarse from all the interviews <laughs> he did over. Oh, yeah. Can't oh it was a quip a minute. He he's, really he's the best interview this side of my friend Joe Paterno. Here's Vic. Good. Going down now. 12 yard line. That's the seventh sack. Bradley Jennings pouring in on him again. First time Michael Vick towards the end of this football game. He's gotten frustrated with the offensive line. He's trying to get it to the outside right here. Florida State brings everybody. No blocking. Peeling defensive end right there. Took away his throw. That's a technique that is often used by Florida State. Blitz inside, peel the defensive ends. Vick had nowhere to go with the football. And here comes. You bet. <laughs> you know, Bobby, too old for that. That's what he's thinking. I am one of those baths. And still wants to get back out there. And keep on flinging. You right, get the feeling one. he'll be back. Yeah, I think this was a much cleaner played game than a year ago in the national championship. Both staffs have come to understand the long layoff and getting their team ready. Well, this is an honor they could not take away from Peter Warwick, the MVP of the BCS championship game. Peter Warwick, who was denied the Heisman, denied the Bolitnikov, steps up at center stage for a national championship the game he came back to win after being held to one pass last year in the desert and he is our most valuable player in this game six catches for 163 yards and two touchdowns there and then a 59 yard punt return for a third touchdown so you talk about most valuable and you got to start with Peter Warren. They Well, the first champion of the 21st century, and it's a familiar face over there, Bobby Bowden and the Florida State Seminoles. It took Bowden 24 years, but he finally got it perfect. And now one of the genuine good guys can enjoy his second national championship as he wins the Nokia Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. The Seminoles are champions. 46 to 29. Coach Frank Beamer and his Hokies showed a lot of heart in their comeback, but they came up short, and he'll go over to congratulate Coach Bowden. One stat that Virginia Tech will go home and think about. Corey Moore tonight was held to one tackle. They lose it. The presentation is coming up next here on ABC. Now on the center of the field, let me introduce the president of Nokia Sugar Bowl Committee, Miles Clements, who will make the trophy presentation. Thank you, Lynn. On behalf of the 100 volunteer members of the Nokia Sugar Bowl, I take great pride in congratulating the players and coaches the fans, the alumni, and the supporters of Florida State University. For the perfect ending to a perfect season. 
Coach Bowden. Coach Bowden, you have taken the Florida State Seminoles through an undefeated 1999 season into the 21st century and the national championship of college football. Let me now introduce from Nokia Vice President Matt West to present the Nokia Sugar Bowl Championship Trophy. And now to present the Sears National Champion Trophy, please welcome Senior Vice President of Marketing, David Selby. David. Coach, on behalf of the more than 300,000 Sears Associates and the American Football Coaches Association, it is my extreme pleasure to present you with the Sears National Champion Football Trophy. To you, your fans, your coaches, your team, and Seminole fans everywhere, congratulations on a perfect season, on a wonderful, wonderful performance this evening, and for your second national championship and second Sears Trophy. Congratulations. Thank you. Please pick it up. It's right here. Now, now, Bobby, you've never been short on words, but before we hear from you, I'm going to ask Larry Paulson, Vice President and General Manager of Nokia, to present the MVP trophy first to Peter Ward. You said you had a what there? Another Lynn Swan. I think Peter's a little faster than I am, Coach. He played great. Coach, this is your first undefeated team. You certainly deserve this moment to tell everyone how you feel about that and how you got that team here. Well, Lynn, I was saying tonight, I just, I just want to be like Tommy and Terry. You know, <laughs> they got one, I got one now. So I want to thank the players and the assistant coaches and all of the Seminole fans and boosters and friends for what they have done to make this possible. Coach, last question. The key to this ball game, the intensity of your offensive team coming back to big plays or the intensity of the defense? There was a moment of truth in the late in the third quarter where they had the momentum and were fixing to win the ball game. <clears throat> Our kids came back and scored and got ahead and scored and scored, and that's, that's what they were made of. Coach Bobby Bowden, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much, man. Florida State wins its second title for Coach Bobby Bowden. It was a night when Coach Bowden's special teams dominated early. Two touchdowns on a block punt and a punt return. It was also a night when the electrifying Michael Vick sparked a comeback that put Virginia Tech ahead. But in the end, Chris Winkie hit Ron Dugans for the touchdown to put the Knowles up to stay. And the man of the hour, Peter Warwick, he finally hosts a trophy.